Hey everybody, it's episode 212 of PodQuest. 212! It's sep- Tuesday, September 18th, 2018. It, it, I think you just completely glitched out right there, like, you were gonna say the month. Yeah, no, I just... And then you thought you were gonna say the day. And, and then I, I didn't know, know what day it was for a minute there, like, it was just, it, it was bad all around. There's something wrong. It's It's been a long day. Yeah, kind of. A little bit. I mean, it's only Tuesday, and it feels like it should be Thursday. Uh, yeah, I feel like that all the time. Yeah. Um, how, how's your day been? My day's been a day. That's about it. Man, on my, on my, I stopped at Wawa on the way over here. Uh, I, I am, I am always dumbfounded by the level of stupid when it comes to pulling into one of their parking lots. Oh, that Wawa's terrible. So I pull. I'm trying to pull in. There's a big truck in front of me. Like yeah. there's a pickup truck. Yeah. That is apparently afraid to make the turn into this parking lot. Yeah. So it waits until, like, the last possible second to the point where, like, I then have to wait for a whole line of cars to go through. Of course. Um, And then when I get in there, this lady gets into her car, like, on the spot next to where I was pulling in. Yeah. And she just leaves her fucking door open. And, like, so, like, I'm inching up because there's not enough room to get into that spot with her door open. And I've, I eventually had to hit the horn because she just wasn't paying attention. When I finally got, like, when she started to close it, though, she was counting money she pulled out of the ATM. Yeah. Like, how ignorant of a person are you that you just leave your door open when you know you're in, basically in the next spot to count the fucking money you just pulled out? I hate to say it, it's it's New Jersey. Like, people are just friggin' ignorant in New Jersey. I mean, it's it's everywhere, but yeah, yeah I mean, it's it's particularly bad here sometimes. Yeah. Especially in Wawa parking lots. I love Wawa, but man, their parking lots are oh, just I, a shit show. I wish I knew that uh, you went to Wawa, because I was going to text you and be like, bring me some ice cream. You know, I almost actually messaged you, like, when you asked me if I was on my way, I'm like, yeah, I'm just stopping at Wawa real quick. Okay. I, I asked you because there were people trying to do um, a Moltres raid over in Haddon Heights by the uh, that stage that's in the park. Oh, okay. And so, if you weren't on your way, I was just going to be like, let's wait till 7.30, and I would have ran over and done it. I see. But since you're already on your way, I was like, yeah, I can't make it. Sorry. It's fine. I'm sure I could have kept the door open. I could have just walked in. Gotten and been set like, up. And... I'd be like, I'll be back in like, by like quarter after seven. Yeah, I mean, that probably would have been fine. You're right. Yeah. Um, like knocking things now. Oh, come on um, now. <laughs> so how about some news? We can do news. There's some stuff that happened. A few things. Um, I'm going to start with this comic book news. Okay. All right. Um, so Marvel officially announced that there is going to be a new Miles Morales Spider-Man book. Okay. Starting in December. Okay. So that's actually good news because he he has been mostly MIA since June, April, May. So w- whenever Bendis officially left, I know his first books with um DC were like May June. Yeah. So I think I think Miles's last issue may have been April. Okay. Um, and th- there was a one off like annual written by somebody else that uh retconned his origin. Okay. Because his initial origin, he was in a different universe. And he kind of became Spider-Man post Peter Parker being killed. Yeah. Not the case anymore. So they kind of gave him uh, a redone origin where, like, somebody else in his life ended up dying because he wasn't good enough. It's So it's not the same Miles from that previous it universe? It is. So, it, comic books... I, I But, it like, he's from a different universe, so it's a different universe. He doesn't have... Peter. He doesn't have memories of that universe anymore. Okay. So that's the thing. Um, he has memories of this universe, or does his memories just start with him being a teenager? Uh, he has memories of his life. Okay, but his life is all wrapped in. So Marvel did Secret Wars a few years ago. Yeah. Um, and in that they literally destroyed all of the alternate universes. Yeah. And Doctor Doom pulled all of the universes together that he could yeah. into what they called Battle World. So it was like every part of this world was another like portion of an existing Marvel universe, essentially. Okay. Um, at the end of that, uh, God, I can't think of the guy's name. There, There's like a, a pseudo-villain guy who, he's basically, he is the same in every universe. Like, he, he is like a constant. Okay. And between him and Franklin Richards, which is Reed Richards and Sue Storm's son. Yeah. Um, they actually rebuilt the multiverse. Because Franklin is the strongest thing in the universe that's weird um he is he is like a beyond omega level um mutant okay so like bobby um bobby drake Iceman, is considered omega level gene gray is considered omega level yeah franklin richards is beyond that i hate that bobby drake is omega level but he's lazy 
Well, he's lazy and insecure. Like when um there was a, there was something I want to say it was in the nineties where Emma Frost took over his body. Yeah, and she is not modest or like she has no self doubt. Yeah, and um she was able to basically unlock his full potential. And even like Bobby in in recent comics has gotten way better. Like he can now turn himself just into basically ice vapor. Okay. Um, he actually threatens the Juggernaut with that when he's having a bad day in an issue. He's like, "Look, you can either just knock it the fuck off." Or I'm going to just turn in the water vapor and freeze you from the inside. Okay. Like, which one do you want to do? <laughs> Can't he, like, control all the elements, but he's just... Not like... all the elements, but I think he I think he would actually have power over water to an extent, too. Like, I, I believe, and I might be thinking of a different character, that he can actually use latent moisture in the atmosphere to create ice. Okay. So, like... He... I mean, that would make sense. Like, he controls it to turn it into ice. Rather than it just forming out of his... Yeah, exactly. So, and I'm like, he uses, like, the moisture in his body and stuff like that, yeah. too. Um, but yeah, so they rebuilt the multiverse, and there's, like, a little throwaway bit in there where um, this the guy whose name I can't fucking remember, um, he's hungry, and he's been hungry, and no one will give him a, any food. Okay. And Dr. Doom has basically just been keeping him captive. And Miles happens to have, like, a burger in his bag and gives him the burger. And so at the end, when they're, like, sending everyone back and rebuilding the universes, he, he kind of says, you know, I like, he, he basically gives him a present, and the present is he brings his mom back to life okay. and gives them, like, a whole new history inside the main Marvel universe. Okay. So, like, in, in the Ultimate Universe, his mom gets killed by Venom, the, the Ultimate Venom, yeah. which is not, like, Eddie Brock or anything like that. Yeah. And that actually does the opposite thing of Pete. Where, like, somebody dies for Pete, and that makes him realize that, like, he can't let people just do things. Like, he has to he has to be Spider-Man to help people. Yeah. Um, Miles doesn't actually go out of Spider-Man again, again, I think, for a year after that. Like, his mom dies, and he's like, nope, I'm done. She died because of this. I'm not doing it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so they gave him a new origin. Like, okay. his, his mom never died, and it was like a kid that he was friends with at school ended up dying, and... He was there when it happened, and it had he actually had he actually been better at being Spider Man at that point, he would have actually probably been able to help more. Okay, but instead he kind of just made things worse to an extent. So that's cool. Yeah, I think it was actually supposed to be during Secret Invasion, which was the the storyline from like the late two thousands where um everyone had been taken over by scrolls. Yeah. And, like, there was, like, a handful of heroes, like, battling back against, like, what they had found out was this giant invasion of these shape-shifting monsters. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so he's got a new book coming. Um, it won't, obviously, it won't be Bendis writing it. Um, oh, God, I just had the person's name up on the screen, and now I can't find it. Where did it go? Um, Saladin Ahmed is who's writing it. I don't know if I just said his name right or not, but that's who's going to be writing it. And, um... Javier Garon is the the artist. Those are some unique names. Yeah. Okay. But I'm excited. Miles is a is a cool character. Yeah. And it, it'll be neat to see. He has been interesting in team books when like other writers have had a chance to write him. So I'm interested to see how somebody other than Bendis will take on him and his supporting cast. Yeah. Uh, just because Bendis has literally been the only person to ever write him and his supporting cast in a solo book. Yeah. So, um, moving on from that. DC is going to do a Martian Manhunter limited series. I might go buy that because I like him. Yeah, so it's it's a 12 issue limited series. Um and it's going to tell it, it it's it's aiming to kind of tell his origin. Okay. Um but in the more modern setting, especially with all the changes that like the DC universe has been through over the last couple of years. Yeah. Um Steve Orlando is writing it who he did um he did Justice League of America recently and the Supergirl run up to issue 21 I believe it was. Okay. And um he's currently on Wonder Woman. Uh I actually I I met him at Keystone that I'll talk about later. Okay, cool. Um he was cool. He was a cool guy. Awesome. Um but it it seems like he's actually really excited to write about Martian Manhunter too. Yeah. So oh, Martian Manhunter, he's a cool guy. So He's an in- he he he's- is a really interesting character. Yeah. And he doesn't get used in books that much anymore. Which is weird, because, like, like he, he, he's he got so much potential. He was basically gone the entirety of the New 52. Um, if I remember correctly, he was part of... There, 
there was a book called Justice League of America that ran for a little while in the New 52. And it had, like, Martian Manhunter and Firestorm and a handful of... And I think Shazam might have been on the team. Okay. Um, They were supposed to be, like, the... If the Justice League goes bad, they were supposed to be, like, the countermeasure, essentially. Okay. Um, But it seems like Martian Manhunter still has some sort of history with the rest of the League. Because um, in the current Justice League book, he is actually the team leader. Okay. So... That's cool. But, like, that's... like he, Other than, the, like, that, like... What eight years, seven years without really like him being around much? Yeah, that's so. You gotta start utilizing characters that people actually like. Yeah, I mean it makes sense too, especially because he's he's popular in the show. Yeah. So ha- in Supergirl, I should say, not just the show. Yeah. So, um, what's next? Um, Marvel revealed that they're going to be doing a new Winter Soldier series too. Okay. Which I'm actually really excited for that one because I really like that character. And he had, it's not that he was, he's been done poorly. Um, Rick Remender is the one that brought Bucky back. Yeah. No. Was it Rick Remender? I might be wrong there. I might have names wrong. And I apologize if I do. Um, I'm going to look it up real quick. Cause I'm almost positive now that I said it out loud that that is not who did it. And I feel real dumb. It might be who, who did it. No, cause Rick Remender did a different story in Captain America. Ed Brubaker. That's who did it. Okay. <laughs> Rick Remender did the storyline where Captain America got old. Like, okay. like recently. Mm-hmm. Um, he did like the next big Captain America run after Ed Brubaker. But Brubaker did the long run where, um, Bucky got brought back to life. Well, I mean, I guess he was never actually dead, but t- made him the Winter Soldier, then made him Captain America after Steve died and all that stuff. Okay. Um, and like that was really good. But then like there were a bunch of series that just weren't that good in between. Up until recently there was a uh, there was a Thunderbolts series, which the Thunderbolts are kind of like the Marvel version of the Suicide Squad. Okay. Um and Bucky was actually the leader of that team for a while. And like that was a good book, but it was a team book. It wasn't just like a a oh, Winter Soldier book. Yeah, a Bucky book. Yeah. But yeah, so th- this this is shaping up to be good. Um Kyle Higgins is writing it, who he did the um Almost the entire run of Nightwing in the New 52. Okay. So Nightwing ran for like 32 issues before he, he became like a secret agent and it was just called Grayson. Um, so I think he did 30 or 31 of those issues. Um, and like he. At, at any point in time during that series, did he ever say fuck Batman? No. Okay. No, cause he had just gotten done being Batman. Okay. Um, so that was the thing. Like he, Higgins brought Dick Grayson back to Nightwing. After, like, five-ish years, maybe less, of him being Batman. Okay. Because Batman had been dead. 2007 or 8 is when he, like, died or got trapped in time or whatever they say that happened to him. And Dick Grayson picked up the cowl and was Batman for that okay. time. Um, and even after Bruce Wayne came back, like, Dick Grayson continued to be Batman in Gotham while Bruce was out being Batman, like, worldwide. Yeah. So, like, this guy's good at writing, like, former sidekicks. <laughs> I guess you could say. Yeah, it's, he's good at making sidekicks into main heroes. Yeah, I mean, not that, like, Nightwing had been an established main hero for a long time, too, but it had been a while since he had been Nightwing. Yeah. Um, he also is the writer who did all the Power Rangers up till the end of Shattered Grid. Okay. So, he, he's, he's been on a good roll lately of pretty successful runs. So we'll get a new, uh, new Winter Soldier, which I, that, should be good, hopefully. Yeah, and like that's a it's a cool character. Yeah. Like outside even outside of the the movies, like just the idea that he was Captain America's sidekick in the 40s and then proceeded to be brainwashed and kept in like cryo freeze, only getting awoken like once every couple of decades essentially to kill like a target that Yeah. nobody else could take out. Yeah. Um and then the last bit of comic book news is there's going to be a special um like graphic novel for Power Rangers, um, specifically about Tommy. Um, it's going to be called Power Rangers Soul of the Dragon. Um, it's actually going to be about Tommy when he's older and he's got like a child. And I guess something happens. His son gets kidnapped or abducted or something like that, probably from bad guys. Yeah. Like like Power Rangers level bad guys. Um, but Tommy does not have the full range of his powers anymore. Like he's older. Like he hasn't been a Power Ranger in a long time. Yeah. Um, in like the preview pages, they show that he can still morph into his Dino Ranger f- from um, Dino Thunder. Yeah, but like it's a little, little off. So that comes out in December two, I think. Actually, maybe. Um, I don't know for sure. 
I'm, I might just be making that up because everything's happening in the December. Um, no, yeah, December 5th. Okay. I was right. Uh, but that that is also being written by Kyle Higgins. Nice. So th- this is kind of the... It's I the get, year of Kyle. Well, no, I was going to say this is kind of like the wrap-up of his Power Rangers in a way. Okay. Because the finale for Shattered Grid was his last issue. So somebody else is taking over the Power Rangers ongoing, like starting with the next issue. Okay. Um, but like this will kind of like culminate that because we I've talked about it before. Like that Power Rangers book did a lot with Tommy's history. Like they they had there's that alternate version of Tommy that's Lord Draken, that's the villain that never left Rita as the Green Ranger and just got more and more powerful. Yeah. Like that was all him. Like yeah. Like he created all of that character stuff. So he's kind of getting to to wrap it up with sort of this other Tommy focused story yeah and uh jason david frank apparently was like a creative consultant on it so yeah which is yeah actually kind of interesting because like he he portrayed the character so he's like even though somebody else wrote the character for him to portray like he's probably got the best idea of what the character should act like be and how yeah because like, they, they're gonna have to pull off of him and how he acted and how he played tommy so makes sense exactly exactly um, but yeah, that is all the comic book news anyway. So there's actually a lot. Good. And usually, I literally just said you were interested in one of them. Yeah, well, actually, I'm kind of fairly interested in all of them, but still good. <laughs> um, so, there was a special trailer that happened today. Did yes. you happen to watch it? I did watch it. I didn't respond to you at all. No, you didn't, because Be- you're rude. Because I wanted to save reactions for... The yeah. podcast. I didn't need a reaction. It, cu- it could be just like, cool, I'll watch that later. I, I mean, you see my read receipt. You saw that I read it. Actually, surprisingly, like, the read receipt didn't come up until, like, hours and hours later. Like, I, because I, I never closed the little window in Facebook. Yeah. And I hap- and, like, there was nothing there. And then I happened to reload the page. And when it came back up, it showed the read receipt from, like, 9 o'clock. Okay. It was weird. Um, but what did you think? Uh, well, it was a Captain Marvel trailer. Th- yeah, there you go. Yeah, uh, the new Captain Marvel trailer was uh, released today, and I have high hopes for it. I re- they're putting a lot on her right now. Um, first movie back in almost in in about three quarters of a year because they haven't had. They're not going to have a movie from July till March, right? Yeah. 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 So about three quarters of a year. First movie back. First Marvel female lead character and it's the movie that's going to bring us into infinity war 2 like in a way they're putting a lot on her and i really hope it's good this trailer made it look great I'm yeah just like i'm just like i'm so nervous about it but i it's marvel they tend to not be able to do much wrong can't say they do no wrong they don't do much wrong yeah and i mean the the trailer did look good um yeah. i think she is going to play the role really well yeah um and it actually, the story seems to be a little different than I expected. So it doesn't seem like it's a, it's not a straight up origin. Like it, it looks like she ends up on Earth with her powers. Like she crash, they show her crashing into a blockbuster at the beginning of the trailer. Yeah, and that seems to be fairly early on in the movie. Yeah. Um. But I mean, you don't really know, like you don't know. No, but like, because... so just based on the dialogue that, they, that yeah. they showed, you get the impression that almost like a th- like a Thor. Where you had like like the movie Thor, you had him in Asgard already being the god of thunder. Yeah. And then he gets sent to Earth and doesn't forget anything, but doesn't have any of his powers. Yeah. So I feel like this might be a similar thing where it probably opens up with her like on Hala or some other Kree inhabited area. Um and something goes wrong and she ends up on Earth. Yeah, I I honestly feel like She's gonna. She's not gonna get to Earth till maybe halfway through the movie. I don't know if it would be that far into it, but it's possible. Just based on like the trailers and some of the scenes, the final fight might be in space from Earth. But oh, I mean, like, it would make sense to I fight feel in like, space. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean. Though. Like in outer space, off of Earth, not in space, like a different galaxy. It just meant like off of Earth because based on the trailer and how they cut it, it like it, the way it seems to me is at one point there is a big ship like forming. Right outside of the atmosphere of Earth. Yeah. And so I'm like, maybe it's like, there's, it's pretty tense, and then halfway through, she crash lands on Earth. They introduce you to the Earthlings of at least Nick Fury and Coulson. You didn't see Maria Hill there yet, though. 
But you did see Fury and Coulson. Well, th- because she is not in the movie proper. She's okay. going to be in the opening or ending. She would have been 13. Okay. I wasn't sure how old <laughs> she was actually going to be. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you figure Maria Hill is 35 in the movies. Like, like that actress is, like, yeah, the actress is, like, 35. Yeah. So, okay. like, her, like, for her to be a, in the movie that's based in the 90s. Yeah. Like, she's under the age of 15. Yeah, true. Um, no, but I, I imagine she's going to end up on Earth fairly early, just because it seems like it's going to have a lot of that sort of, like, her, I mean, like, her getting out of the green suit and putting on just random, like, jeans and a Nine Inch Nails t-shirt. Yeah. Like, and I feel like that would just be awkward to do halfway through the movie, because that's going to be sort of, like, this weird story beat where she's out of her element now that she's back on Earth. But a lot of the dialogue they were showing alludes to the fact that she does not think she is from Earth. Yeah, she doesn't know. She doesn't remember Earth. Which she I, remembers having been on. Like she, she has a thinks, feeling. She thinks she's been there before. Yeah, she but has a feeling. Know. Yeah, she has a feeling she was there before. And I don't entirely know her backstory, so I don't really want to know too much more. I mean, so that is not her backstory in the comics at all. Yeah, like, I know she's like just straight up an alien in the comics or something no, like that, right? No, she she is a human. She she has a um she she was literally like a colonel or something like that in the Air Force and shit happened with the original Captain Marvel and like this machine explodes and it like I forget what the machine's called, but it basically grants wishes. Like that's what it breaks down to. Okay. And it somehow ends up like get granting her all of his powers and then some. Okay. And then, like, that's why she goes Miss Marvel for a long time. But, like, the original Captain Marvel, Marvel, dies of cancer. Like, okay. a long time ago. Like, it's been, like, a couple decades yeah. in the comics. But it wasn't until maybe, like, 2012, I think, when she finally, like, took on the name Captain Marvel in the comics. Yeah. But they actually, at at the end of the trailer, they also, when when they show her, like, glowing and everything like that, um, she, she also used to go by the name Binary. Where she was basically pure energy and pretty unstoppable. Yeah. So I'm wondering if if and she's done that in the comics since then. Like if, if she like releases all of her power at once, she she calls it going binary. Okay. If I remember correctly. Yeah. So, so there's just there's a lot that's going to be happening in this movie. I'm excited for, but they've got a lot riding on this movie. Yeah. And the the scene where she's walking along the the planes and like when she's in like the Air Force get up, that's obviously like a flashback. Yeah. Um, the woman walking with her, I'm pretty sure that's another comic book character, um, Monica Rambeau. Okay. Who, um, she also uses the Captain Marvel moniker for a while prior to Carol using it. Okay. And, um, I think now she goes by Spectrum. They, their powers play off of each other well. Um, Monica can, um, can turn herself into energy. Like, so like light, basically. So that's why she goes by Spectrum. Yeah. She can turn into different waves of light. And Carol can, absorb energy and then redirect it back more powerfully yeah so monica can turn into something and then carol can shoot her back out even more powerful okay that's pretty cool but yeah the i liked the trailer so did i i it's it looked really good i love the like quick colson cameo and then mm-hmm. the they had a little bit of nick fury and it had him uh super na- young narrating and had him super young with both eyes even so. colson lo- looked a lot younger and his, yeah. his hairline was brought way down yeah um, but uh, I'm excited to see Clark Gregg back in the movies. Yeah, me too. Um, I I hope it's not just like a super small bit part, like it was in Iron Man. Like I hope he's got like a little bit of something in there. I think it's gonna be kind of a bit part. Though. I'm sure it will be, but like I would like him to just kind of you know at least be around the way he was in say like Avengers. Yeah, like not around around, but like still like part of it. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say something else about it. Oh, th- did you see the poster? Um, I think so. So they also revealed the poster, and it's, like, her standing in, like, like it looks like a, a, a hanger. Yeah. If you look in the bottom left corner of it, you can see the back of a cat. Like, the back end of a cat kind of walking off. Mm-hmm. Um, in the comics, she has a cat named okay. Chewy that it actually turns out to be some sort of weird alien. Okay. So. Awesome. That's just, like, a fun little little thing, I think, in the poster. So I don't imagine she's going to have a cat in the movie. <laughs> you never know. I mean, that's true. You don't know. But I just, I feel like that's probably unlikely. Um, let's see, let's see. Oh, uh, Netflix, so you mentioned it before, um, announced that they are going to do an Avatar The Last Airbender live action series. Yeah, I didn't read, all I've seen were the headlines, I didn't read anything else on it. But I mean, with that headline, you really don't need much of anything else. 
But yeah, there's going to be a new Last Airbender series that maybe it's time I finally watched the cartoon. Is that available on Netflix? It might be. I don't know. I like I've never watched it from beginning to end, but I've seen like chunks of it like, yeah. back when it was actually still on. I've seen most of book one, which is like season one. Okay. But I've never really seen anything beyond that. So I watched up until pretty much he could control water, and then I didn't watch anything else after. Right, because the whole thing is basically him, he needs to learn how to control the four elements, right? Yeah. So book one is water, book two is uh, earth, and book three is fire. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I've always heard it's really good. Yeah. But same here, like, I've never really sat down and watched yeah. it. Like, And I've sat down to watch a, a few episodes here and there, but it is very childish from time to time as well. And so there are some, like, seemingly fillery episodes that it's just like, all right, I don't need fully need all of this. It's still good to watch, but sometimes it's just like, all right, I kind of just want the story, and I don't want this, like, extra little bit right here. Yeah. Because they, like, they, they made it to cater to kids, but also something that adults would enjoy, I guess. And so the catering to kids part sometimes makes it a little hard to watch. Um. So the, the, the other big news is... The Nintendo Direct from last Thursday. Yes. Uh, did you happen to watch it? I did watch it. Okay. I think I watched it. I'm pretty sure I watched it. So I have all of the relevant news right in front of me. Okay. So I'm just going to start. It's an IG, it's IGN's list of the news. Yeah. So um, this is the last thing first. Uh, Animal Crossing coming to the Switch in 2019. Animal Crossing coming to Switch, which I'm pretty excited for. And they even made a uh, mention to um, the mobile app. Yeah, camp, and, the, the camp one. And camp. I think even uh, Smash Bros. with like, oh, they're gonna wanna, they're gonna wanna relax when they get back from their camping and and fighting. No, or so something. that was actually that was the trailer for Isabel in Smash Brothers. Well, no, afterwards, like it was Tom Nook saying that, like, oh, people are kind of be coming back soon. They're gonna be tired when they get back. I need to get the town ready, and then that's when they're like. Monster or Animal Crossing coming in 2019. Okay, yeah, well, because Isabel makes a, a reference to camp in the trailer for her stuff too. Okay, so I might be mixing them both up because they were back to back and yeah, well, because it was hey, here's Isabel. Oh, cool, it's gonna be it's gonna be Animal Crossing. Yeah, and then like no, it's Isabel's gonna be in Smash Brothers. What? Yeah, and then um, and then it does the oh yeah, Sm- Animal Crossing coming to Switch 2019. Yeah. Um, but there's also uh, Luigi's Mansion 3 is going to be happening. Luigi's Mansion 3, which is going to be amazing. Yeah, coming to Switch 2019 also. And I think they said something about Luigi's Mansion 1 and 2, or 1. Luigi's Mansion, the original, has been a known quantity coming to 3DS. Okay, it was 3DS? I thought maybe it was Switch, but... Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's 3DS, and you can you can play boss rush mode if you only have one cartridge, or you can play together if you have two cartridges. Yeah, and like the second player just looks like a green Luigi, like well, literally like an all green one. So the other character. So if you're playing, main, yeah, that's that's what I said. The the other player. You said second character. Oh, uh, did I? Sorry, in my head I said other. Yeah. Um. There's also Final Fantasy seven, nine, ten. 12 crystal chronicles pocket something what whatever pocket, pocket four, uh, 15 uh, yeah to, yeah uh, final fantasy 15 pocket edition i think is what it's called yeah are all coming to switch in various forms and chocobo dungeon that was the other one yes okay yeah yeah they know what that that's here too chocobo mystery dungeon and um new world of final fantasy which i don't really know what that is so it's the weird thing is so we're getting Zod- final fantasy 12 zodiac age is going to be its own release yeah um, and then 10 and 10, two, I believe are going to be the HD, their own releases. Yeah. But then a bunch of these other ones, other pocket edition is also its own release and that's available now. Yeah. Um, seven, nine, and some of the others I believe are being released together by the sounds of it, but there's no eight. And that's, uh, you, I had brought that up to you guys when we were, uh, t- texting about it. You said that there's no Android version. There's no PC, or there's a PC, there's no Android or iTunes version of 8 anywhere. Yeah, so... So we're assuming it's, it is because it is Final Fantasy 15 Mobile Edition, I'm assuming that they're bringing the mobile commodities over to the Switch. Yeah, so Final Fantasy 7 and 9 were also ported to PS4, like, last year. Yeah. 
Like that. So the version that you can get on Steam and your mobile devices and PS4, they're it's all the same version. Yeah. Nobody likes. Them. Nobody wants to play those versions because they're they're bad. Yeah. Um. Eight never got any of that. Um. Apparently, I, I read. I actually read an article about this. Um. I. It might have been Kotaku. I honestly don't remember though. Uh. Apparently, so game games industry in the nineties notoriously bad for saving source code. For, yeah. For everything. Yeah. Um. Square Enix especially bad. So when um Final Fantasy VII was ported to the PC like back in the 90s like you could buy and if you didn't have a PlayStation you could buy the PC version of Final Fantasy yeah. 7 I think it came out a year after so I want to say it came out in 98 whereas Final Fantasy 7 came out in 97 yeah um a a US or Canadian based studio is the one that did the port um still a, like a studio owned by Square Enix but like a separate studio yeah Square literally just sent them like an unpatched, unfinished version of the game because that was the only source code they had. Huh. So they had to go through and basically remake the game from that point on, clean it up, get rid of all the bugs, finish the story because like the game literally was unfinished on there. Huh. There were still scenes that were cut from the the final game and everything. Wow. Um. So that so that like the source code used for like these modern releases of seven. Probably that source code. Yeah. Odds are, though, 8 source code was just never properly saved. So in order to do those releases, they basically have to rebuild, like, re- like reverse engineer the game from, like, disk. Yeah. Um, Which isn't easy, and no. it's super time-consuming, and Square doesn't seem like they like doing any of that. No, they don't. Ever. They don't. <laughs> no, they don't. They're, they're not going to waste their time. Quotes. Waste their time. Even though, like, people... I, I would want it. I wouldn't yeah. mind having it, like... Yeah, no, I... Eight is probably the one that I would be the most likely to like, get out of that. I'm pumped about nine because I loved nine. Nine was the first Final Fantasy game I ever beat, I believe. So I'm just like, I want that. But I wouldn't mind going back and playing through eight. And uh, I don't think I technically ever beat seven. So I wouldn't mind playing through seven again. But I'm for seven, I'll just wait for the re- remaster. It's never the, coming. Re- yeah. Well, like at this point, I honestly don't believe I, that will ever actually come out. Then I'll never beat it. Yeah, that's fair. Like, that's that's how it is at this point. Um, but I just it I don't know. It's it's almost frustrating because like eight's just the one that just they don't do anything with at this point. Yeah, and eight like I eight has people that has characters that people loved with at least Squall and um well no Squall was the only one that was in Kingdom Hearts so never mind. No, but, um, one of the other ones was too selfie. Was was she in there? Yeah, I don't remember. At least in the first one, I don't know if she was in any others. Maybe she was there, like, for a little bit, and not very noticeable. She was in the same area at... No, she she was on the island with them. Okay. Like, the way that Waka was on the island with them. Right, right, yeah, she yeah. She was yeah. one of those, like, Final Fantasy characters that was on the island with them. Right, yeah, okay. Um. So, aside from, from the Final Fantasy stuff, we also finally found out what the new Yoshi game is. Yeah. It's uh, Yoshi's Crafted World. So... Yoshi's Woolly World was actually really cool. Like, everything yeah. was made of yarn. Like, when you, like, ate bad guys, like, you literally, like, slurped up their yarn, and then, like, a little ball of yarn popped out. Yeah. Um, this one, it's, everything is, like, crafted. Like, things are made out of, like, cups and paper plates, and... Yeah. Like, it's... Yoshi's still woolly, and the enemies seem to look as if they were still woolly as well, but the whole world in general is more like, like, an arts and crafts project. Yeah, like, cardboard and paper mache yeah. and... Pe- and like, Plastic so the, cups being used for building to the point where they even showed off an aspect where you could spin the camera to the other side of the screen and you're looking uh, at the level through the back of the boxes and stuff like that. Yeah, and like I really enjoyed Woolly World. Like that game was a ton of fun on the Wii U. Yeah. Um. So like I'm looking forward to playing a new version of like like a sequel to that. Essentially, is what this ends up looking like. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any more, like, game game stuff. Uh, New Super Mario Bros. U U is coming to the Switch. Yes. Which, I'd rather Super Mario, what was it? Uh, the world. The 3D world. Or not, yeah, 3D, Super Mario 3D World was the Wii U one. Yeah. 3D Land was the 3DS one. I would rather 3D World be on Switch. I mean, they might have, you know, the, the thing is, though, Super Mario 3D World, I think that was... The Wii U specific one, like how every every iteration of Nintendo console gets their own specific kind of Mario. So it was no, I mean sixty four had Mario sixty four, um, GameCube had Sunshine, 
Wii had galaxies. Wii U had... No, I mean, that is the closest thing, but it was... 3D World was still basically just a yeah. new Super Mario Brothers game. It was just yeah. in a 3D instead of 2D plat- like yeah. plane. Um, but at this point, they're basically porting everything. 3D World's going to come eventually. Yeah, it will. I would just rather have that now than Super Mario... Than New Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, I mean, I ha- I didn't get Super, uh, New Super Mario Bro- I, di- I don't think I did. I might have. on the. It was one of the only games to buy at launch. It was like that and Zombie U were the only okay, two yeah, games. Yeah, then out. I didn't get it. I got Zombie U instead. I'm sorry. I, I didn't hate it. <laughs> I didn't hate it. Like, I know, I know. That's the thing, though. Like, I don't know why it was so hated. No, Twilight Prince. No, Twilight Prince. What was it? Yeah, I guess it. I guess we. Yeah, uh, there, Zombie there actually was the only... wasn't a. There was not. So there was no Zelda or Mario like proper 3D game released yeah. on the Wii U. Yeah. Um, we're also getting a uh, Katamari Damacy uh, yeah, which, remake, which I've never. This is gonna sound so dumb, and people are gonna hate me for it. I've never played Katamari game, but I've loved Katamari ever since they've come out. Like I've always wanted to play them. I've never gotten around to playing them, and now that I can get it on the Switch and it's gonna be remastered and graphically updated, it's gonna be. I'm go- I'm definitely getting it. Yeah, no, I, I I'm looking forward to that too because th- those games are just weirdly fun. Yeah, and um, there's multiplayer modes to it and stuff that you can just use the Joy Cons for. It's- and that is coming out sometime this year. Yeah, it'll it's be winter 2018. Yeah, it'll be out before the end of the year. Hopefully, yeah, there it's being called Katamari Damacy Reroll. Yes. Um, there's also going to be a um a, a Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn for 3DS coming. Yeah, which is just a port of the Wii game. Yeah. Um, and then Game Freak, the the Pokemon developers. Yes. They they announced a, a new turn based RPG that's tentative. Right now, it's called Town. Like, yeah. That's the working title for it. That actually looked like it could be kind of interesting. Yeah, I I thought it was a neat concept back with um the Wii. I had a game called, and this was, um, uh, it was a, I believe it was a square released game. Um, oh crap, what was it called? Something Kingdom. But the whole idea of the game, it was kind of like those Harvest Moon type games. You're the king, and you're running around, and you're building together this kingdom, and sending people out on quests, and bringing them back when they came back, and collecting the rewards and stuff. And you had to build your town the way you wanted, where everybody, like, merged. But that was all you did. You didn't actually go into combat or anything. This game that Game Freak is working on town gives me a similar feel with the aspect of you will also be able to like see the monsters are fighting and the quests that are going on because you're defending this town. Okay. And there's more to it than just sitting there building the town. It is going to be sitting there building the town as well as this other stuff. Like it, it's just, it's a new con- it's it's a neat concept and I've always liked those kinds of kinds of games. I wish I could remember the name of that game. I'll be looking it up now. <laughs> Um, so, non, like, game-specific, um, they also showed off, uh, NES-style Joy-Cons? Yeah. For, um, specifically for play with the NES games that are releasing with the online service. So that, they they look like normal size NES controllers, but they'll actually slide onto the Switch to charge. So you wouldn't be able to use them as Joy-Cons, but you'll still charge them like a Joy-Con. Yeah. Which is a little silly, but whatever. (laughs) Yeah. Um... The problem is, I actually, you know what? It, I just saw it. It's actually a two pack, so it's sixty bucks for a two pack of them, which actually isn't too bad. Can you own, you can use them for anything though, right? Or is it no? Just... You can probably only use them for the NES games because there's no um, uh, there's no buttons. there's no triggers and there's no analog stick. It's only True. a D pad and two buttons. See, that's a, like if I can only use it for um, uh, what's it called for the virtual console games, then I, it's not going to be worth it. But if I can use it. For everything, I mean, if, if you you can't use it for everything because there's no like there's there's literally buttons. There's not enough buttons on there, basically. Yeah. Um, like there's no triggers. Even even if they're dock, like there's no triggers. There's no analog sticks. There are like five less buttons than you need. Well, no, I mean, I know there's no like. I'm not saying use the two as one. I'm saying for Mario Kart. Yeah, no, that would never work because it's just you you use at least four buttons in Mario Kart plus the analog stick. You use... Uh, are there only two and not four buttons? As, like, yeah, it's, okay. a, it's a NES controller. Because you could get away. Okay. I was I was hoping it would be, like like I said, 
if it's something I could maybe use, like if I could configure games to where I can use those as well, then I mean, it'd be people will 60 probably, bucks for the two would be worth people it. People will probably figure it out, but it's going to be shitty. Yeah. Because like, these games are no longer meant to be played with a D-pad. Yeah. But the one thing to keep in mind is you can always just use... Um, so if you're not going to play a ton of these NES games, then just use the, um, the Pro Controller. Yeah. If you're you, if you're playing a lot of these NES games, or even if like it, you might be able to use it for like um like Sonic or oh uh, what's the other game Mega Man the Mega Man Legacy stuff yeah not the not the X just the regular Mega Man uh because th- those games don't need that many buttons to play them yeah um and this is a, an actual D pad whereas the Joy Cons don't have a D pad yeah when I'm playing Sonic and when I'm playing anything that's like those 2D games. I'm using a D-pad and not the sticks. Exactly. So if you don't have a pro controller and you got one of these, like a pack of these instead because you intend to play a lot of these NES classics, you might be able to use them yeah. for those other things. I just I don't know for sure if they'll work for that. Yeah. But at, at least, you know, possibility. Um, so the other big thing is they finally unveiled all of the specifics for the, the online service. Yes. Uh, we talked about a lot of this last week. Like it, it's going to be live by the time this episode releases. Uh, I believe it's live on Friday, right? No, it's today. Is it today? Um, it's not yet, but it's today. Oh, um, the nineteenth is what they said tomorrow. It's actually the eighteenth. It's the nineteenth in Japan. The nineteenth in Japan. So, um, uh, in so three minutes, it's probably eight, eight o'clock. The 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 e shop is going offline for maintenance. Okay. It will be up to three hours before it's back up. When it comes back up, the online service will be available. Okay. So, um, but yeah, you know, you're going to get, I think it's 19 classic NES games. Yeah. Um, a lot of them don't look like they're, they're not what I would call classic. They're like, they're not the NES games that I want to play. There's a handful of them though. Like, I mean, technically though, they're all classic NES games. But you know what I mean? Like, they're not classics. Yeah. Um, just because they're old doesn't make them classic. Yeah. Um, like, I'll, there's a lot of garbage. There's a lot of classical and music. It's classical. It's still classic. They're using classic in a different term. Uh, but, I mean, cloud saves are an, an online player, probably the two big things for it. Yeah. Um, one thing that they have... So I don't know if this is 100% the way that they mean it, but it sounds like if you let your um, subscription lapse at all, they just delete your saves. Whereas, like, Sony and, and Xbox, like, that stuff gets saved still. So, like... Say your thing ends in June, but you can't resubscribe until July. Like, Sony doesn't wipe your save data. It's still there. You just can't access it until you pay. Yeah, I, I mean, the way they're doing their cloud saves seems so fucked up already. Like, it's just, it's, it's hard to tell, and we're gonna, like, the best bet would be for us to give an evaluation about it next week. Yeah, like, I'm, like, I'm going to sign up for it because I want cloud saves because I don't trust. Yeah this at all like i was telling er- erica before like so i just got the the pin that came with the digital deluxe pre-order for um spider-man yeah so they sent me like the, it's actually a nice little like vinyl pin okay um and she had asked about like digital games she's like so when you pre-order a digital game is it just available as soon as like it's released i'm like yeah and a lot of times they, you can pre-install them so you know like you can install the game on like monday night when it technically releases like midnight tuesday yeah and then this way, if you're up at midnight, you can play right away. You don't have to download the game. Yeah. Um, I'm like, the only system I won't do that on is Nintendo, because I don't trust that their online stuff will actually remain available. Like, I'll buy, like, the like $20 and under digital games on there, but I will never buy a full-price $60 Nintendo game digitally. Like, I just don't trust that it'll be available. Yeah, I mean, I would. I just, I don't, I'd rather have physical copies. I'm weird. I'm that kind of guy that would rather have physical copies of his games, so... But you don't want to get up and change the game. Uh, but when it comes to the Switch, all the games are with the system. Because, I mean, it, I, well, generally, right now, the system's docked and the Switch games are 10 feet away from it. But it's really like 2 feet away from it because it's actually more like 5, but it's one's on top of the other. Yeah, so. it, it's just with how bad Nintendo is. With, I mean, look at the, at your virtual console stuff. Yeah. Like, they didn't even port that stuff over from Wii to Wii U. You had to pay for it again. Like, no. You had to pay a dollar for all of that stuff, unless you wanted to play it on the Wii. No, I was a... Well, Virtual Console, yeah, like... No, everything I... Almost everything I bought from on the Wii went over to the Wii U. No, you had to pay... So, it would transfer over, but you had to go play it in the Wii menu. Okay. That did not render in HD. I mean, and it was super slow and buggy. 
So, like, if you want it to just be able to turn on your Wii U, specifically if you want to be able to play it on the tablet, which is what I did with those virtual console games. Like, I didn't play them on my TV. Like, I'd play Zelda Link Link's Awakening or Link to the Past on the tablet while, like, Erica and I were watching television. You could only do that if you paid another dollar to download the game onto your Wii U proper. Okay, yeah. Like, it's stupid stuff like that. Like, I already paid $10 for this. Why can't I just have it on this new console? Like, if it, if it's playable on this new console... Why can't I just play on this new console? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like Nintendo's bad at the at the internet. We've they talked are, about that they before. Are. We've, we've said it before. It's not something we have to say any a million times more again. It's we we know. I'm just saying. Like I don't know. I like I said. I prefer to have physical copies, so it's not really that big of an issue. But I, like we don't really know much about how their cloud saves are going to work. We already talked about last week how a good number of games you're not even going to be allowed to use cloud saves. Yeah, it sounds like anything competitive you can't cloud save. Even like, but our Dark Souls, Dark Souls does not have cloud save capabilities. Yeah, so it's like it's it's hard to say what's going to happen or why. So we just we won't know until next week when we can evaluate it better. Yeah, it's like exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's actually all the news. Uh, what about the footage of Joker? Honestly, I've got I didn't look at any of it because I don't I I. It, it looks did, so bad. Did you that... see what Joaquin Phoenix looked like as the Joker, though? I only saw like the weird image of him pulling a clown's nose off of somebody. I'm just like, I just, I don't even want to. There, <laughs> I saw a front face, but there are images of Joker out there as jo- Joaquin Phoenix as Joker for the non-canon Joker origin story that we will be getting. I think next year. Yeah, like honestly, this, I don't. I have. I will generally go see any of these movies. I have no intention of going to see this or even getting it on Redbox. Like, I I don't like Joaquin Phoenix, for one, like, at all. Swung away. I don't like Signs. That that was I know. such a bad movie. You, you, you <laughs> and, like, for some reason, a lot of other people don't like M. Night Shyamalan movies. It doesn't. I like The Sixth Sense. Um, Did not like Unbreakable. Did not like Signs. Was just disappointed by The Village. What about uh, Devil? I never saw it. I stopped watching his movies after The Village because they were bad. I, I don't think I disagree. I disagree. No, I mean, look, everybody has their own opinion. I think they're bad, and he's he's a hometown hero, and I disagree with you. Look, Sixth Sense was a great movie. Not it's not anymore because everyone knows the twist, but it's a good movie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like that that movie's gonna be so fucking. Ba- Apparently, like they already revealed what the Joker's name's going to be in it and everything. Like it's it's gonna be a shit show. Yeah. Like and no, it, it's going to flop. No one's gonna want to see it. Yeah. Like especially like with with how bad the DC movies already do as far as like not box office because they do do well because people want to see Batman and Superman on the big screen. Yeah. But like critically and stuff like that, like reception wise, no, their movies are always trash. Yeah. Um, this one I think is going to be the most trash. If it had, if it had been the, the weird Jared Leto Joker with Margot Robbie, it, pr- it would have probably still been critically like pan, but that's the thing. But it would have made so much money. That's the thing. They're still making that. No, I know. No, they're not making. A... They're making a Jared Leto origin no. story movie. No, instead they're doing the Gotham City Sirens or whatever they're calling it with um, Margot Robbie. They're doing a Suicide Squad two and the. Oh no, I think they're actually calling it Birds of Prey. I don't know. They keep changing their minds with that stuff. I don't but know. last I heard, they were not doing the Jared Leto D- origin anymore. DC's just got to stop after Wonder Woman because it's just Aquaman looks like it might be cool. I hope. I really do. I want Shazam to be good, but I don't expect it to. I'm like, I was pleased with Justice League. I wasn't. I I wouldn't say it was the best thing. I was like, it was better than like, with the exception of Wonder Woman, it was better than everything else. Yeah, but they and they, they still they, missed a lot. <laughs> they missed. They they there was, but it was all like I I don't know. I was I was more pleased with that, and it was like all right. It gave me a little bit of hope. And I really hope, really, really hope that Aquaman is good. Because if Aquaman isn't good, then they just, they gotta stop. No matter what the next two are like. Because it's just, with so much BS that they're going through right now with the changing of the Supermans and possibly changing of the Batmans, it's just, it's like, it's just a shit show. It's so bad. Yeah, I like, they just, they really just need to start over at they this do. point. Like, just wipe the slate clean. Be like, hey guys, we fucked up. We're just gonna, we're just gonna bring, bring Nolan back. We're gonna let Christopher Nolan just make Batman movies. You guys seem to like them. Yeah. Like, look, those, those were good. They, they had their problems too, but at least they were consistent. Yeah. Like, you knew what you were getting when you went into them. 
Um, did, was there any other news that you had, though? I feel like I did, but I don't remember. Well, if that's the case, uh, let's move on to, like, our weeks. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go first this time, though. No, you're not allowed. Nope, I it's am. It's like, you're going to break the internet, because you never go first. Um, I'm going to go first, specifically because like I was at Keystone this weekend. Yeah. So I want to talk about that early. Okay. Um, but before that, um, I finished Spider-Man. Okay. Spider-Man's really good. Okay. Like, top-notch game. Um, I know. I We'll see when I eventually will play it, maybe. It's honestly, even though you've had a bunch of stuff spoiled for you, it's still definitely worth playing. I, look, I uh, trust me. I understand the things that were spoiled for me were probably not that major story beats, but still, to me, kind of major story beats. No, I mean, look, I, I know what got spoiled for you, and they were definitely major story beats. Um, and, but at the same time, they also, in the grand scheme of that game, they're pretty non consequential. Like, I think the game as a whole is good enough that even knowing what happens. Because, like, there are still a bunch of story things that I don't think you've had spoiled for you. And I don't want to say them oh, just yeah, in no, case. Oh, yeah, no, there's, there's, I, it literally, the only, there was two things that were spoiled for Look, me. Look, I was literally crying at points of this game. It's so good. Yeah. I, and I'm not against playing, I'm not not going to play it, I'm just, I, I, I'm, I'm going to wait. Because there's no point in me rushing to play this right now, now that I know two of the things that I know. Like, One of the things is in Until the Credits. It's literally a credit scene. It's the it's the last credit scene, actually. Yeah, it's still. Like, I'm, just, I'm just throwing it out there. Like I know, like it's tr- it's not even part of the game. It's so inconsequential to the story. But the, it's still that's don't don't just people gotta I be agree. courteous. I agree. People gotta be courteous. I'm, I'm not disagreeing I'm, with you. Apparently, but. it's obnoxious and ridiculous that I don't want spoilers. But people gotta be courteous of other people sometimes. Just sometimes you gotta think about it. Like it would be different if it if if it was in like October, you know. Yeah, that's, that's if October first somebody started throwing that stuff online. It's like okay, yeah. At this and, point, and that, like fuck you, you're being a dick by yelling at people for spoiling you. But the game hadn't been out for a week. That's that's my point. Is the game was it was Friday night when that happened. The no, game it, had it, been out for was it a even Friday? week. Yeah, I guess it, it was. was Friday night. It was Friday night, Saturday morning at like one in the morning. I, the game had been out for a week at that point, and I'm just like. All right, well, these two things have been spoiled for me over the past week. I'm not going to play this game, so, or at least I'm not going to play this game right now. I'll focus on other things. I'd still, I'd say, play it when you when you can. I'll, I'll play it when I'm ready. I'll play it when I'm just not thinking about it, and I see that it's for sale somewhere for cheap. And I'd I'll say, buy it. If you happen to see it go on sale on like Black Friday, even if you're not going to play it right away, I would definitely grab it because it is well worth the the time. Oh like, yeah, you'll you'll have fun even even outside the story. Yeah, no, I don't. Um, I will. I was just. I so I also did the Mega Man Eleven demo. Okay. Um, it's Mega Man. Yeah. But not Mega Man. Yeah. Like it's. They tried to add more to Mega Man. So it it, it actually looks very pretty and it plays very Mega Man-y for the most part. Um, not the like Mighty Number no. Nine did not feel right. Like it didn't feel like jumping felt bad. Like like the, that game felt bad. This feels like Mega Man, but so they added this double gear system. That it's the L and R buttons, yeah. and you just always have it. R slows down time or speeds you up. Like I forget exactly how they're wording it, but it basically makes everything around you move super slow. Yeah, and L um makes your shots more powerful, like okay. drastically more powerful. Um, but you can only turn either of them on for a little while, and they're both on the same cooldown. Yeah, and so if if you just have them on and turn them on and off, they'll just sh- they'll they'll go back down fairly quickly. If you keep it on too long and it like overheats, kind of like in No Man's Sky, if you're using like the mining laser, yeah. If it overheats, then it like freaks out for a second and takes a long time to go back down. Yeah. And you can't turn it on again until it's completely cooled down. Whereas with the other two, like you can just flick them on and off as much as you want, as long as they don't haven't overheated. Yeah. Um, they add like kind of an interesting concept to it, but at the same time, I felt like it was making things a little too complicated because there were a few parts where you could tell that's definitely what they wanted you to use, like they. They wanted you to do that stuff because otherwise the the sections were just not impossible, but harder than they needed to be. Um, like there's one particular thing where it's like this: it's this enemy that like stacks himself, and one one of these discs that is his body um, can be hit. Like that's like the head basically. Yeah. Every time it restacks, it restacks in like a different spot, so you can't. Sometimes you have to jump to hit it. Sometimes not. Um, but he every like 30 seconds or whatever he shoots all of his pieces out and they fall back down onto you. Yeah. And it's super quick, so the only way to really like effectively avoid them is to slow down time, move into the right spot 
and then wait for him to stack back up or get lucky and, and be able to get that spot right next to him where you're not going to get hit and spam him with attacks for a little while. Yeah. And, like, I don't know, like, I don't, that's not how, how I want to play Mega Man. Like, Mega Man X, sure, like, that game is all about having weird little gimmicks to it, but, like, Mega Man isn't. Mega Man is just about shooting guys. Maybe, maybe Charge Beam? Maybe Charge Beam? Um, and then, like, sa- saving the, the boss stuff until you get to the, to the boss that needs that for the weakness. Yeah, and it's like, it'd be fine if it were, like, a power from a boss that you would get these things, but. And you still like, get the powers from the bosses. Yeah. But, like, I remember, I think it was, like, Mega Man 2 is when you get the time stop ability. You could use that. I mean, that's. To go through one of the flame levels. But that's that's well, it. Like I mean, you use it for Quick Man. Well, yeah, you use it for Quick like, Man. People that don't know how to play Quick Man's level use it to get through the the folly part. Yeah. But really, you just save it for Quick Man. The whole bar of that takes Quick Man to under half health, and then you just the blast them real quick. Yeah. But it's just like yeah, that's that's just it seems like a little too much for Mega Man. They also got rid of the 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 float through doors. So you know, in in, in Mega Man, when you get to a door, a boss door. Yeah. You would jump to it. And, like, you didn't have to, but everyone always jumped, and you'd kind of, like, do that weird float transition into the next room and then drop. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't happen anymore. I don't think they've had that in... No, it, it has literally been in every Mega Man ever. Even 9 and 10 did it. Okay. Um, 11 does not. What about 7 and 8? Yeah. Okay. Every Mega Man. It's just this one. They got rid of it. When you hit the door, you immediately drop to the ground. That's stupid. Yep. That's stupid. Like, they need to patch that in. It is the dumbest thing, but also the most annoying thing. They need to patch that in. Um, but, like, it it does feel like a Mega Man. Like, it does not feel bad. I'm sure it's going to be fun to play. Yeah. Um, it was just, you know, it it was different in ways that it didn't need to be. Yeah. If that makes sense. It makes sense. Like, Mega Man Mega Man's one of those games where you can literally just keep making the same game with just new, interesting levels, and everything will be all right. Yeah. Um, I'm just double-checking. Um, you... You were going to talk more about Luke Cage, so I'll, I'll yeah. leave that. Um, we've been watching Handmaid's Tale season two. Okay. Um, that's a fucked up show, and yeah. it is even more fucked up in season two. Yeah. Uh, we're not quite done yet. I think we have two or three episodes left, but Jesus, I can imagine. Um, and then there there was one comic, um, Champions, which is um, it's all like the the actual teenage heroes that are they're mostly second generation heroes. Okay. So you have like um Miss Marvel and um Miles Morales and like Nadia Pym I think is on the team. Um Riri Williams is on the team now. So like all these like second generation teenage heroes. Yeah. Um they just had an issue that was kind of like this intermission issue between like a the big story that's happening right now. Um that was a school shooting. Oh jeez. Um yeah. So kind of a heavy issue um it was actually so the team was actually out like helping rebuild like a community center or something like that um like doing like doing good yeah and miles got a text message um like like an alert thing on his phone because um there was a shooting at his school okay and so like he like rushes off in a panic because he's worried about his friends that are like at because like most of his friends were actively at the school yeah um he wasn't there because it was like I think they said it was, like, one of those, like, pick your elective days or something like that. And he's Spider-Man. He doesn't have time for electives. Yeah. He's lucky if he has time to just make it to class in general. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, so it was just this really well-done look at what that sort of stuff is like. So, like, you had him being very hard on himself because, you know, in his mind, had he been there, he could have helped. Yeah. But, like, in actuality, if something like that happens, he might not have been able to. Yeah. Um. I think they said. I think there was like eleven casualties. They said. Oh jeez. So like eleven people died in the in the comic. Um, they they had the, like these pages of funerals where like people were talking and like they were at like a teacher's funeral at one point and like the person giving them the eulogy was like talking about like how the person like loved being a teacher, loved their students, like all the stuff that you see and hear on the news when shit like this happens. Yeah. Um, and you you find out that one of Miles's friends actually got shot. Um, but he he actually was an X Man. Okay. Um, that he he is no longer an X Man. He is Gold Balls. I don't know if you remember that from like the internet a few years ago. His mutant power is he can just make these gold balls appear. Okay. And like a lot of them and a varying size. Um, but it was one of those things where the 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 shooting happened so quickly that like he didn't even have time to actually like react and try to do anything. Um, but ended up getting shot and like spent the like 
every so often they would mention that like he's still in the hospital, like yeah. he hadn't woken up yet and stuff like that. Yeah, but it was just it was really really well done. Okay, like it wasn't gimmicky. It wasn't there was no like lightheartedness to it really or anything like that. They didn't try and make it seem like you know this stuff happens and life goes on. Like that, like it was very evident that like this is the thing that happens. Like everyone goes through it a different way when it does happen, but it has like rippling effects to everybody. Cause they, they showed one of the, uh, they showed Miss Marvel at her school and her school was literally having an active shooter drill. Okay. Where like everybody had to huddle behind the teacher's desk and like lock the doors and stuff. Yeah. So like, it was just, you know, it, it was kind of scary almost like yeah. not that either of us are in school anymore, but like, these shootings happen everywhere. Oh, it's it's a scary thought in general. Not even just school shootings, just so shootings in this country in general. Yeah. It's just a scary thought that like shit could happen anywhere at any time because people are so unstable. And it's like it's just it sucks when media has when certain forms of media have to go into these topics to try and portray a like the scene to people who don't quite get it. And it's just it's ridiculous. But that's that's a tough read i'm sure yeah and and but again like it was done very well it had a very um miss marvel at the end of the issue was talking to spider-man who'd kind of gone off the grid yeah um and she basically tells him it like i, I don't remember exactly how it was worded but she basically said like you you can keep sitting down and thinking that this is your fault or you can stand up and actually do something about it yeah and like that's that was kind of like the message like this stuff happens but you can't just like wallow and like pity everything that happened like stand up and try to make the world different yeah sort of thing yeah um but yeah so that was champions 24 okay is the the issue um but other than that uh this past weekend was the first keystone comic-con in philadelphia and from what i hear maybe the last no they already (laughs) have dates for next year okay okay i don't know why you thought it would be the last from what (laughs) i've heard it was very like dull there. Like there was not a lot going on. Yeah. Um. There were not many people there compared to other conventions. Like not at all. Yeah. Um. They were. They used the space very poorly that they had. Like there were. There was a huge area of the convention center just empty. Like literally. Like they could have spread people out, had more artist tables, something. But instead, they just had this big empty area. Like there weren't tables or anything there. Like it was just there with nothing. Yeah. Um, and plus they had like this huge area taped off for the celebrity stuff. There was never a line for a celebrity outside of like two or three of like the really big names. Yeah. Um, even like, um, so like Kevin Conroy was there. Um, he was one of the people I saw that had it like a consistent line, but it was never super long because there just weren't that many people there. Yeah. Um, and even, um, all the panels I went to happened to be in the largest non main stage room and, have you you've gone to panels at a convention before? I'm sure, right? Yeah. You know how like unless you get there super early, you're generally stuck just like finding like a random seat kind of somewhere on the side or in the back. Yeah. Um, I was getting there like maybe like five or so minutes before they started, and was literally walking and sitting in the second row, like with nobody next to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, because there just there weren't a lot of people there, and like I wasn't going to like random like no name person talking about like why they like Pokemon or something like that. Like, I, I know Erica went to, like, a Pokemon, like, fan Yeah, I saw thing. her post that she went to, like, a Pokemon meetup. Yeah. I guess they were semi-official because they were giving out cards to get um, Groudon and well, It was the Philly Pokey, po- the Philadelphia Pokemon League. Yeah. For, and, it, yeah, they had giveaways for Pokemon um, Sun, Moon, and Ultra Sun, and Ultra Moon. Yeah, like, she got a 60 Groudon out of it yeah. for her moon. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, like, I, th- what did I go to? I went to, it was the Batman Day panel. Which was um people that work on the Batman comics. Yeah. Like it was um Greg Capullo, who's a huge comic book name. His panels are usually full. Yeah. And he usually has lines like wrapped around convention centers waiting to get like autographs and stuff. Yeah. Um it was him, Steve Orlando, who we were talking about before is doing the Martian Manhunter book, and Peter Tomasi, who has written a whole bunch of Batman stuff over the years and been an editor on it too. Yeah. Maybe a third, or not even a third, maybe like a quarter of the room had people in it. And like, this room probably fit several hundred people, and there was less than a hundred in there. Maybe 50? Yeah. And that, that's maybe being generous. Um, same thing, I went to, um, the Kevin Conroy panel. His was a little more full, but still pretty empty comparative to everything. Um, 
I'd say that one, that one was probably more like half full. Um, and then Marvel does a next big thing panel where they just have um, some of like their creators talking about like the books that they're working on and answering questions. Yeah. That was back to back with the Kevin Conroy panel, and they were probably like the rooms were probably about the same amount of full. Okay. Um, but then um, the last one I saw was um, I'm gonna I hope I don't butcher his name. Uh, Vic Mignana. He's a voice actor. He did. Yeah. Do you know who he is? I know the name. So he was the voice of Ed in Full Metal. Yeah. Um, and Akaku in Bleach. Okay. And a bunch of like ton- he he's bro he's been Broly in Dragon Ball since the first Broly movie. Yeah. Um, so like he like he has done a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, apparently from what some of the people in the audience were saying, his panels are usually like to the point where people are just kind of standing around the edges. Yeah. Because there are no seats left. Um, there were maybe thirty people there. Jeez. Yeah, like, like it was small enough that he didn't even stay on the stage. He just kind of like hung out like in the audience. Okay. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, that might be slightly too bad advertising. Like, so I didn't like I didn't really know what Keystone Comic Con was until you had mentioned it like two weeks ago or week like like I was like oh the, right there's a Comic Con like what I didn't even know yeah. it was the first one so like they were getting some big names they weren't though like. Like you figure they the biggest names they probably had there were um yeah, John Barrowman was there. Um all the people from the office were like the secondary characters. Yeah. So like you didn't have like your like your Jims, your Pams, yeah, your Steve you Carells. I my coworker was there and he saw Kevin. I don't know who that is. Kevin Malone, the big fat guy. The bald headed guy. I've never watched the office, I should preface that. I literally only know Steve Carell, Jim and Pam. That's it. So and then I, who <laughs> was there from the office? Um a blonde lady. Oh, was she skinny? Yes. Angela. Yes, that sounds correct. Mm-hmm. Um, an old man, Creed. Creed, who was well, he's also a folk singer. Like his name is Creed, and his real name is Creed because he is from a folk band. Like he was an actual known name before The Office. Oh, okay. And then there were two, two or three others. Like, probably the guy that you just mentioned. Kevin was yeah. a derpy, and tall, I, be- I believe there were two guy. other people too who I just having not watched the show, they didn't really register for me. Um, but then you had, like, um, a bunch of people from True Blood were there, but, like, True Blood's been off the air for six years. <laughs> um, Troy Baker was there, like, he was, a, he was one of the other big names. Um, like, Troy Baker, Kevin Conroy, like, they, they had some voice actors and stuff, but I don't, I think the problem is, like, people are either going to that stuff because they want to see comic book related things, or they want to see celebrity, like, big names, and they didn't really have either of those going on. Yeah. So, like, they had celebrities, but they didn't really have, like, the big names that's going to draw a huge crowd the way Wizard World does. Like, Wizard always gets, like, at least one or two, like, huge people. Like, whether they're, like, somebody from the MCU or the DCU or something. Bam Margera was there, though. It, that's that's true. He was there. Um, I'm, I'm looking through the list of, of people that were there. Like, um, there were cool people there. I'm not saying that there weren't, but there just, there wasn't that, like... The, the mom from Gifted. Amy she, Acker? Yeah. More, she's Fred from Angel. A- Anna Paquin. Yeah, I mean, she just a- said a bunch of people from True Blood were there. I know. Uh, Big Joe Okerson was there. He's a comedian. I didn't see him anywhere, actually. Um, uh, but Brian uh, Baumgarter, who is uh, Kevin. Carl Spinney, who's from Sesame Street. Carol Spinney. There, there's an O in there. Carol. But it's a guy. So? Okay. <laughs> uh, Catherine Tate, who is also Doctor Who and The Office. Yeah. No, look, uh, again, I'm not saying that there weren't people there. I'm saying they didn't have that name that's going to register with everybody. I know. Like, look, if Jim from The Office had been there, I guarantee there would have been a million Office fans there. I, I love how, like, one of their entertainment guests was a cosplayer. Yeah, no, I, th- like, all the cosplayers had, like, the the cosplayers oh, had you... larger, nicer booths than the Artist Alley did. Yeah. Um, the Artist Alley was, again, in a weird spot. It was in the back. It was, like, three aisles, kind of, like, off by itself. Um, and they didn't have a lot of big names there. Like, they, they had people that, like, they had, like, your your popular-ish DC Marvel writers. Like, yeah. I all the people there that, like, I saw, like, I like all of their work. Um, but, like, the big name, big name comic book guy they had there was probably um, Chris Claremont, who he did, like, the... He basically made the X Men the X Men in the eighties. Yeah. Um. Oh, I, you know, I'm kind of upset I didn't go to this because there's a lot of people I would have loved to have met. Honestly, like every one of them was at least forty dollars. Oh uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. 
Rob Paulson, he's been around forever. I would have loved to have met yeah. him. Like I said, there were a lot of cool voice actors, but even then, meeting them, it was finding a time that they were actually at their table because they were in a lot of panels and stuff. Yeah. And, like, it's like 40 bucks just to go up and, like, meet them. Yeah. So, like... Phil Lamar. I, I wouldn't have minded meeting uh, McCod Brooks. Yeah, like, a- again, like, there were some cool people there, but nobody that's going to draw the crowd on their own, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Um. Oh, and- wait, hold on. I'm sorry, I know I keep interrupting you, but this guy definitely would have drawn a crowd if I had known about him. Vince Papali was there. I don't even know who that is. He is the guy that the movie Invincible was made after, that Mark Wahlberg was in. Oh, yeah, I never saw where that. Where was, he was on the Philadelphia Eagles team for two years from an open trial. Yeah. Andy Serkis was actually supposed to be there, but I had to cancel. Yeah, he canceled. Andy Serkis and Nolan North both had to cancel. Yeah. Um... But yeah, so like Chris Claremont was probably the biggest comic book person there. But like normally these shows, like they have like this weird sort of deep pull of like older comic book people there. Like you'll have like your Claremonts, your Neil Adams, like guys like that. Yeah. Um, along with like the current working people, like this, like they had they had current guys there that like are writing good books. Um, Jim Zub, Greg Capullo, Kyle Higgins, Steve Orlando, Peter Tomasi. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anybody else there that I can remember. Um. And I'm drawing a blank. There wasn't one other guy there. Um, he wrote Power Man and Iron Fist, and I cannot think of what his name is. I uh, don't know. I just closed it, so but, I can't even look it up. But otherwise, you know, it's just it was a lot of just you know small small tables of like people like selling like their their um creator own stuff, yeah, or their um or just their artwork, yeah. And like some of those people like are super talented, but like it was in the back of the of the place, and there wasn't a lot of foot traffic going through. Like there wasn't a lot of foot traffic in general let alone foot traffic to make their way back to artist alley yeah because you literally had to walk to the very back of the room just to see them yeah it it seems like from what i'm hearing from everybody or from you mostly but from everybody is that like they just it it's their inaugural year and they tried to go for too much uh too much and ju- and they didn't market it really well yeah um i know like so from going to all these shows, there's a few artists and stuff like that that, like, I know. Like, yeah. Like, that, like, I'm friends with them on Facebook. Um, so, like, one of them was at this show, um, Chris Campana. And yeah. I, I, went, I was talking to him for a while, and Saturdays are usually the busy day at a show. Like, artists and stuff like that usually make a lot of money on Saturdays. And yeah. At least enough to pay for them being at the show. Yeah. Um, from what him and the guy that he's friends with that was on that table next to him were saying... Like, they weren't really selling anything on Saturday. Yeah. Like, you, you know, occasional people come up and buy a print. Um, no, A lot of artists do commissions at the show. Yeah. Where, like, they're literally, like, you know, you go in on a Saturday, and they will either have a your drawing done by the end of Saturday, or if it's something complicated or you go to them late, sometimes Sunday. Yeah. Um, neither of them ever, were ever, like, behind. They were always, like, working on the most recent commission they had gotten. Yeah. And, like... That's rare for those shows. Like, usually these guys, like, are working in their hotel rooms at night to keep up with the commissions that they're getting. Yeah. Um. So, like, it's kind of, a, it's, it's like a bummer just for that. Because, like, if people weren't making back the money that they had to spend to, like, come to the show, then next year they might not want to do the show again. Yeah, and that that's hopefully where you got to hope that the uh, guys who ran Keystone Comic Con are like, hey, we know last year didn't have a year that we were expecting, we'll let you come back for half the price if you decide to come back. So, something to make it worth yeah. their while, and hopefully so, they can... But, like, from what I'm seeing online, a lot of people are saying that they were very unhappy with the convention because it wasn't that big, and there wasn't a lot there to do, and there wasn't a lot of people there. Yeah. So, like, why would people go next year if the convention wasn't so, that great this year? So it's Reed Pop. Who they do packs? They do New York Comic Con. Like, yeah, like this is kind of what they do. Yeah, um, and they've had this happen before, where like year one, year two, rocky, and then they kind of like find their ground and get it going. Yeah, um, a lot of the people that I was talking to, and and I agree, we're we're saying like this is too close to a lot of other big shows. Yeah, so Baltimore Comic Con is in two weeks. Yeah, or like a, just over a week from now. It's um the last weekend of September. The weekend after that is New York Comic Con. Like there are a lot of attend like people that attend this stuff that aren't going to be able to go to all three of them. And if they have to pick one and they're from like the Philadelphia area, 
they're probably going to go to New York or Baltimore because yeah. that's a larger established show, yeah. depending on what they want to see. And and to add to that, like, let's see, we're, what, midway through September, right? Yeah. Otakon was maybe a month and a half ago? So, yes, but also different crowds. For Like, that yes. diagram definitely overlaps pretty strongly. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, like, there are those people who, like, all right, Otakon was in the beginning of August, and then you got Keystone, and then you got that, and it's like... All right, well, I'm definitely going to Otakon because it's Otakon. Keystone, I'm probably not going to go to because it's brand new, and I got Baltimore Comic Con two weeks after that, and then New York yeah. Comic Con three weeks after Keystone. Yeah, it's just... But so next year, they're apparently aiming for late August instead of the middle of September. Okay. Which, honestly, like, that puts it in a good spot for Comic Cons because you have San Diego is the the big one that's in July. Yeah. And not like so like you're not going to have to worry about like getting talent. Like they're not going to all be booked for San Diego and no one coming out to this. Yeah. Um and there's nothing else there's nothing else comic related in that neck of the woods that week or like that area. Yeah. Hopefully anyway. Yeah. Um so hopefully next year it it does better. Um there were a couple of like things worth mentioning. I lost the cards. Oh, there they are. So Erica actually talked to to this one, um, and I, I ended up looking it up. So um, there's a guy at the show, um, James Maddox. Yeah. Um, he's a writer. Yeah. Um, he has a Kickstarter right now for a book called Dead Legends. It's um, – I'm, I'm going to read the card. So a widow seeking revenge, a champion hellbent on losing, an assassin second-guessing her contract. Dead Legends is a martial arts throwback series that hits harder than a kick to the skull. Written by James Maddox with art by Gavin Smith. Okay. Um, I actually I checked out the Kickstarter for it. Um, it actually looks really cool. Yeah. Like the art, the art's good. Um, something about that story reminds me of like Yu Yu Hakusho for some reason. Like I keep thinking of the weird tournament near the end of that. Yeah. Um, or like Mortal Kombat. Okay. Where like a bunch of people have to go fight in like this weird kickboxer tournament. Yeah. To like either get revenge or prove themselves or what have you. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I actually I did back this on Kickstarter. Um, nice. They're actually pretty far from their goal. They're like a little. They're right around six thousand, but they need fifteen, and they have about eighteen days left as of this recording. Um. A lot of Kickstarters, unless like you're giant famous, um. It tends to be like the last like couple of days is where yeah because a lot of people like, I I was one of them I I'll watch something and if it looks like it's gonna get funded then I will pledge just so, like I don't want to be like I'm gonna set this money aside and then it's not gonna be taken or I, I for me it's like all right I know this is gonna be do- a done deal I want to pledge this so then I can get my hopes up and not be like eh, let's see what happens maybe maybe not. So that's the shitty way to do it. I know. Um, cause I mean, one, Kickstarter doesn't take your money until it's I funded. Know. So you waiting until the end to see if it's maybe going to get funded is what a thousand other people yeah. do. And then something doesn't get funded. Yeah. So like you're always better off if you see something and you think it looks cool. Even if you just drop like the bare minimum and think about and like maybe like up it later because if, because you want a better reward. Yeah. Like, Put the money into it this way, A, the backer count rate rises. Because if somebody looks at, at something and, and sees, like, okay, well, they still need, like, $5,000, but they already have, you know, 2,500 backers. Like, that means that there's at least, you know, 2,500 people are interested in this. Yeah. Like, it is likely to get yeah. funded. I know. I just, I, I actually haven't been on Kickstarter for a while. There's been one thing that I've been wanting to check on and maybe get, but. The, the Horizon board game? Horizon Zero Dawn? Yeah. No. It's, There's, it's like a hundred and fifty dollar board game. I'm not surprised. Uh, no, it's um a notebook set thi- a thing like a D and D esque notebook thing. Okay, and it's like the rings in it. You can add more paper if you need to. So it's like it's something. that's just it looks really cool that I've been wanting to get into or to get. Cool. Uh, but yeah, Dead Legends. It's on Kickstarter. Yeah. Um, of course, I don't have the link just here, but it's going to run till October seventh. Um. And I'm sure if you just go to Kickstarter and search Dead Legends, it's yeah. going to come up. It'll probably just come up. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested. I, like, I really do hope it gets funded because I'm, I'm interested to see what it ends up being. Yeah. Um, and then the other one was, um, we talked to Jason Lennox, who is an artist. Um, he does a book called Lord of Cosmos. Um, there's two issues out right now. He, he kickstarts the issues. Um, and it sounds like he kickstarts, like, he does all, he gets all the work done before they kickstart it. 
Yeah. So, like, the writers write, the artists draw, like, they get it lettered, inked, like, they do as much of the work ahead of time as they can, and then do the Kickstarter to basically make their money back and pay for, like, the printing and the rewards and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, this way, there's not that awful, you know, you back a book and then it doesn't get made for six years, which yeah. I've had happen. Yeah. Um, so, like, his turnaround's been really good. But the book, um, it's heavily inspired by, like, 80s cartoons and stuff like that and weird action movies and horror movies and things. Um, it's all black and white, but um, we, we picked up the first two issues. I haven't had a chance to read them yet, but, like, the artwork alone is just very kind of, like, visceral and nostalgic. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to seeing what it's about. It's a lot of, like, anthologies. Okay. So, like, there's a bunch of stories per issue, essentially. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's... Uh, that's about it from Keystone, I guess. Okay. Like, it wasn't a bad convention. It was just... Like, there just wasn't a lot there to do. Yeah. Like, even panels. Like, there weren't a lot of panels that were super interesting. Yeah. So. Makes sense. But it's the first year. Like, yeah. Things can, things can only get better. Hopefully, it'll... Like, because it's, it's the first year of a new convention. It's not like the first... Like, PAX Unplugged was a, a huge success. But that was like... The fourth kind of PAX convention going on in the, like, worldwide, like. It's the uh, fifth worldwide. Yeah. It's the fourth in the U.S. Oh, yeah. And, and, that, but you get what I'm yeah. saying. Like, it's big because it's PAX. This is something that's not as well known from a company that isn't as super well known. So it's. I mean, Reed Pop does PAX. Yeah, but PAX has a known background. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I, I, I was just, but yeah, like, I will definitely check it out again next year. Yeah, so I might check it out next year. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, I, I will. We're going to Baltimore in two weeks, and then New York the week after that. So yeah, I'm sure those will be much busier. Much, much busier. So what were what, what did you get up to this week? Oh, uh, what did I get up to this week? Um, excuse me. Well, I I had a super busy weekend, of course, like always. So weekend. Oh man, I'm burping a lot for some reason. Weekend and it smells. Ugh. Weekend wasn't all that like nerd busy. I. I ended up cooking all day on uh, Saturday. Why? Friends had a party, and I always over overextend myself. Usually, when parties happen, and offer to cook a lot or offer to cook more than I should. You don't bring anything when I have a party. Did you ask me to bring something? I asked you what you needed, and you yeah, said I that you didn't need anything. So th- that's your fault. But no, I ended up making two strombolis. One of them um, was a barbecue pulled pork stromboli. So I ended up cooking for. 24 hours straight because I was cooking a pork shoulder for 12 hours. Jesus. <laughs> 8 o'clock at night, Friday night, till 8 o'clock in the morning, Saturday morning. It was, it was just on, it was in a crock pot on low. When I went, when I came down, 8 o'clock in the morning, grabbed my tongs, grabbed the bone of the pork shoulder with my tongs, and just pulled it out of the meat. Nice. It's, and like, I just, I like, I used the tongs to squeeze the meat and it just fell apart. Which is always how you want it to be. I was like, this is amazing. This is perfect. This is beautiful. Uh, and then, like, with the sauce, so- I made, like, cheese sauces for each. So I made a cheesesteak, wi- a whiz wit one, a whiz wit stromboli. So I made a cheddar cheese whiz sauce. Okay. To put, to top the, the cheesesteaks with, and then rolled that. And then I brought the cheese whiz sauce. And then for the barbecue pulled pork one, I made a provolone cheese sauce. And you could dip either one into either one. It was good. People were raving about it because, I mean, it's me and I'm a really great cook. But, yeah, it was, uh, that was a long, busy day. Sounds like it. I, I ended, like, I wanted to go out and play Pokemon for a bit, Pokemon Go, but I didn't get a chance to because I was too busy doing other stuff. But, um, over the week, uh, I can't remember if I had finished watching on Be- uh, Ultimate Beastmaster before we recorded last week. Uh, you hadn't quite finished. You, when I got here, you were in the middle of, I guess, one of the last uh, episodes. And I was in, I was like halfway through when you got here, I think. So I finished that. Yeah, yeah. You, I remember you saying that because they, they had done things differently. This I was, year. I was through the first uh, um, set of uh, semifinals, and they were going to the second set of semifinals. But I watched uh, the the new season. I finished watching the new season of Ultimate Beastmaster. The, they changed it up big time. Even the last level on the last stage, they changed it up. Before it was a race to the top. This time it's like, it is a race to the top, but it's one-on-one. On one. It's three people okay. get to the last round. 
and they have to race to the top, and there's, they have, like I was explaining to you last week, they have uh, super boosters, which count down once you get to a certain point, and so they, there was three of them, and they had to just get to the top and hit all the super boosters as fast as possible. So, like, the guy that won ended up winning with, like, 1,500 points, and I, I, I unfortunately, because I was looking it up, I knew who the winner was going to be, because I was looking up to see the which countries were in it and I accidentally read like oh so and so won oh, I was like oh happened. son of a bitch but it was still cool to watch him win and his backstory is like really cool backstory so I was like all right this, I'm happy to see that this guy won um what else did I watch I watched uh or do um I watched we'll get into this one real quick I watched uh, a few more episodes of Luke Cage so uh I'm on episode 7 so episode 5 and 6 like, I realized why I wasn't into Luke Cage. I posted this on Facebook. I'm surprised no one had said anything about it, except for one other friend. I'm not that into Luke Cage, at least the first five episodes, because there are too many story beats and not enough intriguing stories. That's fair. Episode five, episode four or five, could have ended about three times and been an appropriate ending. But the the show is an hour long, and like I I believe it was episode five had two. Musical interludes. Uh, there's a few episodes that have too much, too many musical interludes and, for no good reason. And yeah, and that was like the first five episodes. There was at least two or three in the first five episodes where it's just two musical interludes. I'm just like, I don't need all this. There's too much going on. So at, at the point where I'm at, Claire went on vacation. We'll say it that way, and not like. I mean, at this point, that the show's been out since June. Yeah. She fucking got scared and left because yeah. Luke lost his mind. And so I'm like, okay, good. That's one beat, story beat. But then it's like, they finish that off in that episode. But then that the very end of that episode, it's like, oh, by the way, you're getting sued now. And I'm like, there's another one that I don't need. Like, it's just there's too many story beats. And honestly, I don't remember if that even came up again between there and episode 11. Spoiler alert, it doesn't. Because the guy who sues him is dead. Oh, that's right. He was... So, yeah. It's like, that. this was pointless. Like, showing me that and doing that aspect but of it... But it was a way to get Foggy into it. Yeah, but I, I just, like... And that's what... It, that's the problem with it. There's, there's also... No, there's not a good villain. Yeah, like, like... The Jamaican guy is almost a good villain, but not yeah, quite. Bushmaster's neat, but he's not that great. Shades is awesome, but his whole thing with Mariah is just annoying and Ma- mariah is, is the worst mariah sucks i hate mariah so uh the, she gets a little bit better later on but like even that yeah. it's not enough to make her even remotely like compelling like i believe episode six she stabbed somebody in the hand i'm like okay she's starting to willing to get her hands dirty this is where a villain needs to be like not her afraid to be a villain she needs to be a villain if you're gonna make her the main villain she needs to be one yeah and but, uh, I don't like, think they know who they want to be the main villain. Yeah, and, like, that's and the that's, problem. That's a big issue. That's a big problem. But the beginning of episode six, they started to redeem themselves with a uh, warriors um uh, callback. They had one of the guys shouting Luke Cage with three beer bottles on his fingers and tapping him. I was like, okay, now I'm more into the show. And then they had another fight with uh, Bushmaster and Luke Cage, which was an actual nicely choreographed fight. That was at the bridge one? That was the bridge one. And I was like, okay, it's bringing me back in. But then it was like 1 o'clock in the morning. I started to fall asleep. So I'm halfway through episode 7. I got to restart that one. It's yeah. starting to get me. And that's what a lot of people told me is midway through and on, it gets really good. So like episode 7, I remember being pretty cool. Because there's like a cool fight with Misty and Luke. Um, yeah, in, and the, it, like, in the garage. I did see that. Yeah, and it's, it's one of those where like Luke's getting ready to do something. And Misty just chases him down. And he's just looking at her like... Yeah, yeah. Um... Because she got her prosthetic robot arm. Yeah, she has um, an arm now. But then there's, like, two episodes that are really bad right after that. Like, yeah. I think it was eight and nine were super slow. Yeah. And I, I could tell you, like, broad what happened, but they were so boring that I spaced out most of them. Yeah, and that's that's the problem with it. It's like they're spreading themselves too thin. And this is coming from a guy who loves Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones TV shows, they have that many story beats because they have that many characters. But they're... But they do it Nine properly. Nine out of ten times, they're compelling, too. Yeah. Like, none of these characters are compelling yeah. this like, time. Like, Luke is a compelling story. Anything that has to deal with Luke and the heroes, very compelling. But, like, even them, like, like they're not that good this year. 
Uh, yeah. For this season, I should say. So, it starts to redeem itself. Now I hear it starts to fall apart. We'll see, but I'll, I'll probably have it done before the end of the weekend. Uh, hopefully, and I can get into uh, Iron Fist Season 2, which I'm hearing is actually really good. Or... Pretty good. It, the 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 last thing I saw on that was it literally said Iron Fist season two. It's watchable. Yeah, like so. So I I, I want to. I can't wait to get into that. Um, because I actually I enjoyed uh, Iron Fist season. I know it has its flaws, but uh, there were things about it that I did enjoy. That I hope they expand on a little bit more. Yeah. Like I, make I, better. I had a few things spoiled for me. Like like it was my own mistake. I was I was reading something else and it it talked about stuff. Yeah. Um. But, like, it's nothing that, like, bothers me, bothers me, but it yeah. makes me wonder, like, oh, okay, that actually sounds interesting. I'm yeah. I'm and, intrigued. And the, the thing that I feel like they did fairly good with Iron Fist were their characters, besides Danny, were very compelling characters, all of them. Just Colleen. Colleen was uh, an interesting and compelling Davos. character. And Davos was actually kind of cool, too. <sighs> Who's that one? That was, like, his friend that by the end of the season wasn't his friend anymore. Okay. Um. But, like, the, the dad... And the the brother and the sister. Yeah, I didn't. Like I them. thought they were more interesting characters than the Meachums. S- yeah, the Meachums. Then honestly, a good handful of characters in Jessica Jones, even Jessica Jones season two. I was like, I'm more interested in these characters than I am in some of these other ones. I mean, that's fa- like, and everyone has their preference. Yeah, but I mean, like, honestly, like, like I said it to you like last week or the week before. I at this point, I want a Daughters of the Dragon series. I want yeah. a show that's just Misty and Colleen. Yeah, they are two of the best characters that they have with this stuff right now i'd rather just watch them beat up guys in bars well i can see (laughs) i can totally see them doing heroes for hire because he kind of hinted at it on c in c in episode six so of being a hero for hire and there's some stuff um later on that hints at it a little bit more too yeah i did read something um so netflix just they're doing that NX thing, whatever that is. I didn't. I haven't really looked into that, but I saw there was like a trailer. But when I read about it, um, I guess it basically Defenders is not on the list of shows that they have or something like that anymore. Like yeah. you can still watch Defenders, but it's not like an active developed show any longer. Yeah. Um, and I know all the actors have said that there's not going to be a season two and stuff. Okay. Um, but that doesn't mean that we couldn't get like a Heroes for Hire or a Daughters of the Dragon. Yeah, like, there's no reason there can't be other spinoff team up shows. Yeah, so and that's what I see happening is maybe like there's a Heroes for Hire where it's Danny and Luke, and I think that would probably end up being a better show because I think those two characters they play off each other very well. They play off they each other well and each other very well, and they have two very different personalities. Yeah, which works. Yeah, same thing with with Misty and Colleen. Yeah. But so hope we'll we'll see what happens with them. But honestly, at this point, if they stopped after Iron Fist, or if they stopped after the next season of Daredevil, I'd probably be happy because they're just most of the shows are just going downhill, and I'm kind of watching them to watch them and not watching them to enjoy them. Yeah, but, like I, like that's Punisher, how I am with with I with um Luke Cage right now too. Yeah, like I'm watching it because I want I want to get through it so I can start Iron yeah. Fist, and that's about and, it. And it's like Punisher. I didn't watch Punisher till after Jessica Jones came out. I didn't watch Jessica Jones till right before Luke Cage came out. And then as soon as I got done Jessica Jones, I went right into Luke Cage, and I watched two episodes. And now Iron Fist is out, and I started watching it again. It's I'm watching it to watch the next series. I mean, I so I watched Punisher the weekend it came out. Because that, yeah. that one was really well done. That one was was very well done. If I remember correctly, you were just super busy when that came out and just didn't get around to yeah, it. It was it, I was very busy when it came out. It was well done, but at the same time, it was like I was also going through things where I'm like, I don't, I can't take serious right now, and I want silly. Like I want, yeah. And th- these Marvel things are not silly at all. Yeah. But um, I I started Jessica Jones right away, and I got most of the way through it, and then I stopped for some reason and just forgot to go back to it. Yeah, because it that like it hadn't gripped me the way that yeah. everyone oh, every and, other series had, and it's like I I I said this before, and I'll say it again. Like Jessica Jones season one, the most compelling part of Jessica Jones season one was Kilgrave, and he was the most interesting episode to me of Jessica Jones season two was episode seven eight when he was in it. It was like episode eleven, was it? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, like super late in the, it was, that was the most interesting show. And that was like, 
Jessica Jones, they kept the story beats very minimal, and it was all about either her or uh, Trinity, and not really about anybody else. I was like, okay, like, this is good, like, this is enough to follow, but, like, she ended up doing some stupid things, it's just like, I'm like, this doesn't make sense, and then they never called back to it. Yeah, see, like, I disagree, like, I like Kilgrave, I do think, was very compelling, but I like jessica's character i didn't like all the mommy issue stuff like I, that was my problem oh, yeah, with season like, two that's where i felt that it fell apart like i i'm cool with a character being an asshole but there's just something about jessica that i just it just doesn't i'm like okay like that's enough like yeah no i i can get that because there definitely are episodes where you're like you there's no reason to act like, like that like the way she treated malcolm like, Malcolm's an awesome character. The way she treated him and pushed him away and, like, I was like, you're such, you're a bitch. Like, this dude's doing everything he can to help you. And you're just gonna do, like, whatever. Like, I would have done the same thing he did and left her for a competitor. Yeah. It's just, uh, it just drives me nuts. Um, it's supposed to, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then the last thing I did was, like, once again, I watched one more thing. Uh, I believe this is the only other thing that I have of reference to talk about. I watched the Bleach live action movie. I did see you mention that on Facebook. Um, I didn't like talk about it much on Facebook, and I'm I'm gonna keep I'm gonna try to keep things to a minimum because I don't want to spoil things for people who might be listening, or I I could call spoiler alert now. No, I, I'd say keep it broad. Um, but I think it was very well done. So, is it like just the the initial story? It or? is. From the the beginning until um, uh, Renji and and her brother take her back to Soul Society. So I guess like the like the big climatic battle is him versus Renji. Yes. Okay. And so visually, for anime movie comparison, it's stunning. It could it could have done a little. They could have had a little bit of work on it, but the the hollows that they had on it were great. The story like. They took a few liberties with the story, but frankly, I feel like they did those liberties better than Bleach itself. Like, what they did with, like, the battle sequence at the end with Renji, and what they did with another particular character that I don't want to, I can't really talk about right now, because, like, that would spoil a good majority of the ending. Like, what they did with these characters in that battle sequence was much better than what the anime and the manga did. Or it's like, I believe, it, like, their fight against Renji and and her brother were in the middle of the night on, on a street. Yeah. And no one was there. And he ended up just waking up the next morning at, uh, what's his name's place? Uhara's. Or Uhara's place. This one, it was in the middle of a friggin', in the middle of the day, in the middle of a square. People were all over. Like, but no one can see them, right? No one can see them. And, like, that's as far as I can talk about with that, because that also plays into something that happened prior to that. So, out of curiosity, how does, like, how does, like, Renji's sword look, like, when he releases it? Um, Assuming he releases it. He does release it, and when it's in its, like, non-stretched out form, it looks like a blade. It looks shiny and nice. When he does stretch it out, like, he's sitting there, and he's, like, throwing his hand and stuff, and it's it's CG. It's obviously yeah. CG, but that's why I said... Comparative to other anime live action things, it is stunning. Like, and then it looked good. The fight choreography was great in this, to the point where they were able to make the guy who was playing Ichigo like seem like he didn't know what he was doing, but luckily be able to be blocking and dodging and defending and stuff. Okay, like he was stumbling around. Like at one point, they jumped from one bus to another. And his jump wasn't, like, a nice jump. It was, a like, a jump with stepping his feet type of jump. Which, I mean, like, that's how Ichigo kind of fought early on. Yeah, because he doesn't have training. He's yeah. not trained to fight a captain or a sub-captain. Like, and then, because, like, like, one of my favorite scenes in, in the anime, because we're watching it right now, is when he, um, like, when he finally gets, like, badass at the end of the Soul Society arc. Yeah. When he, he blocks the, the blade with his sword that's about to kill Rukia. Yeah. And then jumps in front of all the lieutenants after he's literally just been getting his ass kicked by everybody, including lieutenants. Yeah. And he just fucking plants his sword in the ground and takes them all out barehanded. Yeah. It's like, okay, so now he's a badass. Cool. Yeah. It's, and like his, it's deserved because of his spiritual pressure. And that's yeah. why he's a bad, he's a badass because he's powerful. He's not a badass from training, but he trains further and further to become even more of a badass. Yeah. Um, 
They did have Orihime, they did have Chad. I was with the They did have uh, Ishida. Ishida was cool, his bow looked awesome. Was it like a power bow, or did it turn into like an actual it bow? It turned into an actual bow. Okay. Uh, it looked really cool when it was the actual bow form. Um, they did do the, the contest, but it was very, very quick. Did, was, was there a Menos, at least? Uh, no, there was no Menos. It was just one, uh, one hollow that came out, and it ended up, like, I, I'm not going to spoil how like, yeah. they resolve all that or, and everything. They do have Grand Fisher in it. Okay. Also, he, Grand Fisher looked amazing. And, like I said, like, that's one of the things where I can't talk about. Did, um, because they do change some stuff about Grand Fisher. Did they do the whole Chad and Orihime stuff? Um, Chad blocks, uh, like, a, a thing comes in there at, uh, what was the name of the burger place? Something Burger, I can't remember, but it's a ridiculous name for a burger place. But it's like a fast food restaurant that they're, that, like, all the, like, Chad Orihime and some other of their friends are in. And Chad, like, blocks a big thing that comes in and hits him in the arm. He doesn't change his arm, and Orihime doesn't use her things yet, but he does block it. So, it shows that, he, like, he's super powerful. And d- does she have the thing she, in her She head? has one, yeah. Okay. So, so, like, they they did keep some stuff. Orihime doesn't have bright orange hair. She has, like, a light brown orange hair. Uh, Ichigo does have the bright orange hair, or bright-ish. Like, it's more... It's... Like, I've, s- I've seen the images yeah. of the characters. It's it's so. less bright than, or it's brighter than Orihime's, but less bright than it would be. Yeah. Um, like they, it, it was a good movie. Like it was enjoyable. I'm excited to see how far they bring this. Like they, they did like the first, the first arc. Like, yeah, I mean, that's 20 episodes. If they do it properly, they could probably get, uh, f- four or five movies out of this. If they do, that the initial arc rescue Rukia, um, or he may gets taken rescue or he may, and then the fight against Aizen, they could get four or five movies. Yeah, I mean, like they probably like just thinking about it. There's a couple points in in like the Soul Society arc that like make good like break points. Yeah, like you, you like you take a break after um after Kimpachi. So like do do the next movie and have it lead up to the Kimpachi fight. Like, have that be the final fight of the movie? Yeah, and that they did that, like, because Bleach came out every week, but they had, se- like, the, each... It's broken quote, up in the season. To me, quote, season, like, they had fillers after that for a couple of episodes. No. After, I'm pretty, I thought they did, or they had, like, a week or two no, off. There were, so that there might have been weeks off, but, like, as far as episodes go, um, there were only two filler until the end of Soul Society okay. arc. But it, it, so, like, the Kimpachi fight ends with like Ichigo in bad shape and that's when um Yoruchi takes him and like starts to train him yeah. to do Bankai. So like yeah. that's a good place to end. Yeah. And then you get to do like the next movie is like basically the end of that. Yeah. I, like there's there's just there's so much that they could do and I hope they get the push to do it because the way they did this worked for it. Yeah. Like like I said and the one thing that I'm super stressing, the Hollows looked like Grand Fisher. He played a big role in it because he plays a big role in Bleach. He he looked awesome. You know what's funny though? He's only in two episodes. Uh, yeah, but he's no. He's, I know. I I agree with you. I just think it's funny because he's only in two episodes. Yeah. Well, I guess three because I think the his first appearance might get cut off and then like two episodes. Yeah. But I, I might be wrong about that. Yeah, but like, and I'm sure he had a bigger role in the manga. Probably. Like, from what I'm, like, I talked to some friends this weekend at the party that I was at, and they were like, well, the, based on the manga, the, the anime wasn't all that great. The manga was a lot better. I, everyone always says that. Those people are douchebags. No, like, mean, not that I, your friends are douchebags. I meant, like, people that are always like, oh, what, the manga's better. You should read the no, manga. From what I hear, the manga is a lot better. But, like, like literally, just, everybody says that about every manga. And for me, I'm just, who has the time to read that many chapters yeah. of a manga? And, like, a lot of that comes down to, like, the filler stuff, like, like, the anime usually has to kind of, like, do its own thing, even, a, like, even in, in, in like, confined stories, yeah. because, like, some stuff in, like, manga does not translate to, like, live action. Well. Yeah. So. Yeah. But it was, uh, it was, it's a good show to watch. Push watching it. Um, I'm hoping I can get done Luke Cage this weekend and hopefully maybe get through most, if not all, of Iron Fist. Because I do want to rewatch season one of Attack on Titan and then do season two and three on Hulu and have that to talk about. Because 
I've been looking forward to season two of Attack on Titan for forever. I didn't realize it wasn't going to be on Netflix. So it makes sense that there's now two seasons, and I think it ends at the end of season four. Okay. I think I heard something about, like, this is going to be the final season. Yeah. I think we're... I, so I've never watched Attack on Titan, like, mm-hmm. at all. Um, I might give it a shot, though, after we finish up... Because um, we're... I think we, we're up to a, episode 160. I would, what I would do is I would try to find something lighthearted for a while. Bleach is pretty light. It it gets less light the more you go on, though. And it gets a little bit more serious and heavy heart. Like, like I mean, it's... It's hard to like. Attack on Titan is very dark. So to be fair, Erica isn't going to enjoy comedy anime. Like she wants stuff that has like deep, like like long form storylines to it. Yeah. Um, and a lot of like light anime tends to be goofy in a way that she is not going to enjoy. Well, like, if that makes sense. Well, I mean, kind of maybe try to have her watch the first season of Naruto. No, she 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 already said she doesn't want to watch Naruto. Okay, it's it, and I don't honestly, I don't either. Like it's just it's too long. <laughs> it's just too too long. There's there's a hundred episodes at the end of at at the end of the original series that you can just skip no, entirely. I, even when you take out all the filler, though, it's still more episodes than Bleach without the filler, oh, yeah. and that's just too many episodes. That's because it's two se- two different series. Yeah, but exactly. I, and I I do want to go back through and rewatch all of Naruto. I want to go back through and rewatch all of Bleach as well. Plus, um, Naruto is one of those shows where, like, I'm generally okay with most dubs. E- even, like, some of, like, the early dubs, like, from, like, the 2000s that aren't great. Yeah. Um, the Naruto dub is just so bad. Well, then, I would say <laughs> maybe see if you can get it to watch maybe, like, Trigun or something. Just because, like, I can't emphasize... Trigun gets fucking dark, too. It, it But it's... Th- there is a... Like, it gets a lot more light heart. Like, Bleach, you're gonna have... 170 or whatever, however many episodes you're watching, minus filler, however many episodes, minus fillers, Yeah. of, like, on-the-spot story that you gotta watch, you gotta pay attention. Attack on Titan, like I said, like, there's, there, there's, like, the se- the first season is broken up into three segments, and the, it's all, like, you're seeing character death after character death after character death, and destruction, mayhem, and, like... There's not a lot of breathing room in Attack on Titan. Okay. To where I'm just try to find something that's a little bit lighter than Bleach, or maybe something that's not as long, so that you just you can get a reprieve from the seriousness. Well, also, keep in mind, like there, like we watch a lot of sitcoms and stuff like yeah. that too. So it's yeah. not like we're just watching this yeah. all the time. So like, like we jump around between shows. Like we yeah. generally watch Bleach like at night when there's not quite enough time to watch like an hour long show. Yeah. Um. But then, like, there's a lot of, like, a lot of 30-minute sitcoms are coming back soon, like, so... Do, you guys watched Brotherhood Full Metal, right? Yeah. You didn't watch the original? No. Maybe you watched the original. I honestly don't like the original. No? No. I didn't think it was the... I didn't think plus, it was amazing. I didn't plus, have... it's so old now, it does not look good on an HGTV. Yeah, true. Uh, <laughs> like, even Bleach doesn't look great. Yeah. It's still um 4x9. Yeah. So, it's all boxy and yeah. a little blurry. It might pick up later I, on it's not until it probably won't be until after the eyes and stuff i think is when it goes 16 by 9 okay um might be right before that it's i i think it's after the the um zanpakuto rebellion storyline which was the filler story yeah but i'm not sure if that is pre or post i think that might be the which, last filler before the, like the zanpakuto rebellion that was actually a decent filler. Apparently, that that is what I've read. Like that is like the one well, filler that people generally like, say is like that's worth watching. The, the thing about Bleach is like the fillers. There's a lot of them, but they're actually decent. Like some of them are really cool. Some of them are like backstory. Yeah. And then then there's like the Zanpakuto Rebellion. That one was really cool. Like it was yeah. neat to watch. My um. The only yeah. thing I dislike about the filler, the like the I specifically like the the new Captain one and that one. Is it's in the middle of that story that yeah. like, and it takes place at the end of the story, yeah. Where it's like, all right, well, now I know that all these characters make it through the current storyline. Exactly. So like, I'd rather just f- skip it all, and then if we want to some other time, go back yeah. and watch it. Do that. Yeah. And I would say try to watch through like even the like the last two arcs after the eyes and stuff. You can skip. The arc immediately after, because that's not needed. Yeah. But you can still watch it. It was 
it was cool, but you don't need it because like you've seen the end, right? Erica no. listens though. Yeah, she does okay. listen, so don't spoil it. But I never actually finished it. I wa I watched up till um the end of the Eisen storyline. Okay. So like there's that one last canon arc that I never finished. Yeah, so the, the both those arcs pretty much start the same. So it's like the the arc right after the Eisen stuff, it's like, oh yeah, just a recap of what happened and why things are the way they are. And it's like, oh by the way, things are kinda reversed a little bit during this arc. And then the next arc, oh yeah, just to recap again why things are the way they are. And it's that's fair. Yeah, so it's which tends to be what they do with the filler. It's like, all right, here, here, are, here's an episode recapping everything that happened because we just spent thirty episodes doing something completely unrelated. Yeah. Uh, um. But yeah, we're actually we're in the the Weko Men- Mundo part of it Weko right Mundo? now. Weko Mundo. Um. The what is the last? So Chad just got arm number two. Okay. And then proceeded to get eviscerated. So you're just you're directly in. Yeah, like, like they're, the they're very in start of Weko Mundo. Yeah, like they're getting. Uh, we're, we're seven episodes away from the the new captain filler arc. Oh, okay. So you're actually even further than I thought. Yeah, because I think it'll be. So we come back. Um, shit gets real in about skipping the filler. Let's call it ten episodes. Yeah. Like I know that. Like shit's about to get real. Yeah. Because like I haven't been looking ahead at the episode ep- like the synopsises, but I've been looking at the um the titles. Yeah. Um. On like the on the list of all the filler stuff, so like I can see like okay, so this is what's going to be happening here, and okay, so we're we're about this far from this. Yeah. Um. So yeah, like ten episodes or so is when like shit gets real. So you're just about to get it to the battle with Ichigo and the number five, or yeah, I, I'm not going to say. I believe that's what happens is because w- where I think you are, it's like so. There's a rematch coming up between Ichigo and somebody. Okay. Um. And then there, right from there, I believe it goes into another fight, and then surprises happen. Okay. And I w- once we start recording, I can tell you exactly what's yeah, going yeah, to happen. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I think I think I know where you're at. And yeah, shit hits the fan, shit hits the wall. Like you haven't seen the fight with the science captain yet, have the you? The pink haired one. Um, and, and Renji. Oh wait, you mean the science cap? I'm sorry, I was thinking the science of Spada. No, the science captain. No. No, you haven't seen that one yet. None of the captain stuffs happened. Okay, so then yeah, I think I know exactly where you're at. Yeah, like like the the only soul reapers from Soul Society involved right now in any part of the story are Renji and Rukia. Yes, Renji is fighting the the sciency um Espada, the the pink haired one. Yeah, and Rukia just beat the Espada that was taking on um her former lieutenant's appearance. Okay, and then. Chad got his ass kicked by like a spot of number. The, I don't even know what number he is. He's one that has the big weird like circular scythe thingy. I think I know. What you're and wears like the eye patch. Yeah. Um. He got wrecked by him, and Ishta just fought like the weird girl with like the pink ha- or the purple hair and the purple like things under her eyes. Yeah. With like the yo-yo sword. <laughs> Did he break his wristband yet? No. He. Oh, the little chain. Um. He. He's wearing a. Oh wait, no, that was in that was in Rescue Rookie. Oh yeah, yeah, in Rescue yeah. he has the glove that when he breaks that it He like, loses his powers. Yeah, but it like supercharges him yeah, for a few yeah. minutes. Because that's how he beats the science captain. Yeah. No, in this one he he you he's he got his powers back. Yeah. He's just got like the charm on his thing that gives him like the giant weird like bow. Yeah. That lets him shoot like fifteen hundred arrows in a second. Yeah. But he's also got the the metal things on his belt that he can use to create swords of energy. Yeah, and that's how he beat the girl. Yeah. So. Because those things, I think, he eventually uses them as arrows as well. He, well, yeah, he uses it to like fight her, and explains that it's basically just sapping her power to create the blade, and then shoots her with it. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, I think I know where you're at, and it's gonna it gets awesome and yeah like you're moving pretty quickly to the story because you're avoiding all the spoiler or the fillers. yeah we're just skipping the filler so yeah which is reasonable and it, you wh- skipped the soccer episode though so i mean but and the baking episode i mean come on now but it also goes like it they're less than 20 minute episodes yeah. when you factor everything in because so it's like 23 minutes and some change on hulu and by the time you get through the opening theme and the recap, it's already more than four minutes into the episode. Yeah. Like, the Bleach and then episode number title card does not happen until four minutes and a few seconds in. Yeah. And then the last two minutes are 
the ending theme and the next episodes. Yeah. So you really only have like an 18, oh, 17, I, 18 minute episode of Bleach. I used to watch episodes so fast in concurrency to where I'd be able to have my mouse at a spot and know exactly where to one click and I would get to the title card. Yeah. No, like, on Hulu, I just hit the arrow, and, like, I generally know about where it's going to be, because it's always a little bit different, Yeah, depending on, like, how big of a recap they have to do, but, uh, yeah, so, like, we can watch, like, three or four episodes in under an hour. Yeah. So it ends up being, like, all right, well, let's just keep watching, and, you know, it's going to be 17 minutes to watch another episode. Yeah. Let's just throw it on real quick. Yeah. So. And I'm glad to hear the movie was good. Yeah, it was, it was so good. I would, I would say watch it, um... It's obviously in Japanese, so subtitles are probably gonna or dubs are gonna probably suck. Yeah, something like that. I would just sub, um, I would just watch subtitles. Yeah, so I, you're gonna have to watch subtitles. So it's gonna be something you're gonna have to pay attention to. Maybe like movie night with you and Erica. Because I remember when I shared it on Facebook about it being released soon, Erica was excited. And she wanted to have like a movie night to watch it. I I just I when did I did I watch it on I watched it Friday night and I was like I just need to get this done and out of the way now. So I'd watch it. I'd definitely watch it again. Yeah, I kind of actually want to watch the Full Metal one too. The, I'd say watch it. Like, oh, did, I, that's right, you did. Watch I did it, didn't watch you? it. I'd say watch it. It was good. It it had the appropriate story beats. It had like a good stopping point. Um, I don't. I think it's pulling more off of Brotherhood than the original series, which is probably it means it's pulling more off the manga. Yeah. Um. But but they haven't. I, I can't remember if. Envy was Envy or Sloth, or, or I believe Envy was, or if she was Wrath or if she was Sloth. That's all I can't remember. I think she was Wrath or Envy and not Sloth, because if she was Sloth, then it's going off the original series. She's... Well, the only female was Lust. Lust. In that, or, sloth in the original series was not Sloth in Brotherhood. Yeah, I think Sloth in the original was like the, their weird resurrected mother yeah which is supposed to be is i'm i'm surprised it, which is the one who can stretch her fingers that's what who she's supposed to that's be. that's lust in, so lust i think so so in the original full metal in the 2003 the homunculuses weren't these created beings from this father figure yeah they were they were the, the they, homunculi were from like Human transmutation gone wrong. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, just human transmutation in general, because that's what happened when you tried to do it. So the two final homunculuses were Ed and Al's mom and their teacher's unborn child, basically. Yeah. And then, it, whereas in Brotherhood, they all end up being these, like, specially created things based on, like, aspects of this one person's personality. Yeah. I wish I could just get a... It's never that easy. Pictures of the, like, characters. <coughs> yeah, it doesn't have... Uh, yeah, it's just gonna show, show me Full Metal, uh, Brotherhood. Or no. No, you're right. Sloth in the original, it was his mom and he was like the water thing. Or it was the water thing in that one. Yeah. That's right. So yeah, that one wasn't in the new one. So as far yeah. as, but also they didn't have Scar in it. But I don't remember oh. how big of, like. Scar wasn't that big in the early part of the series. Yeah, and that's, it, it cause we've talked about this before and we, like, like it goes through, um, through, uh, um, what's his name's death? Hughes's death. Yeah, goes through Hughes's death, and it does a thing at one of the other laboratories. Um, yeah, so it's going off mostly Brotherhood. I'm assuming it's okay. Like it did do the Alexander thing and the little girl, but it didn't have Scar destroy her. But maybe that'll be something that they do at the beginning of the next one. It could be because I mean that could be the way to introduce Scar. Yeah. Um. But anything else? No, I think that's it. All right. Well, I think that's going to be an episode then. Yeah, probably. Uh, thank you for listening. If you'd like to find more of our content, you can head over to www.one-quest.com. You can also help us out by supporting us over at patreon.com slash one quest. You can find all of our podcasts on your favorite podcast service, whether it's Stitcher, Google Play Music, Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, um, or just on your favorite podcast app. We also are on all of the social media platforms that you know and love. Facebook.com slash OneQuestOnline. Twitter and Instagram are both at one underscore quest. And our YouTube channel is YouTube.com slash OneQuestVideo. 
And of course, you can always email us, social at one-quest.com. And that's going to do it until next week when we come back to talk about some other stuff. Thanks for listening. Bye. Thanks, everybody.